a neat's guide to the parallel world healer, the strongest cheat chapter 16 to 30. Lightning outside the walls with toe. I was coming to the woods right next to it. It costs money to eat and stay in the inn for now. After that, I went back to my guild and looked for a highly paid request that I could receive even in the F rank. Toe said he didn't need it earlier, but when he recommended registration, he applied lightly. Status was deluded in disguise. Compared to me, Toes is a paladin or demon, even if it's not unusual. Besides, that status would make it easy to get into some kind of problem. I faked it. You're the last one. Ooh. That's why I was exorcising goblins. Get rid of me when I go to the woods to pick up the fruit because I have goblins and I can't get the work going. It was a request. Apparently, goblins like fruit. I wasn't sure if I should use erosion but I could even crusade with my fist if it was about goblin. My attack power is over 6000 and it's natural. I like swordsmanship, but I like the style of fighting with my fists, like Mr. Gaze. The guardian of the goddess was activated automatically each time he crusaded goblin. Low level goblins had no skills, rather than witchcraft, and only had about a healing pill. Then it's time to get back to the guild. Toe didn't hesitate horribly rather than frightened, when he was a monster opponent. I'm used to the handling of witchcraft, and it wasn't too much of an exaggeration to speak of advanced adventurers. Speaking of which, these guys don't disappear. Why? I've been thinking about it for a long time. It's one of those mysteries I was going to look into when I left the dungeon. That's a dungeon story, isn't it? I read it in a book before. The monster in the dungeon disappears. Normally, monsters don't disappear. Now there's less to look into. Finally. They say that monsters and demons mean something different. That's what Toe said earlier when I put the word demon out in the conversation. Apparently demons combine more than a certain amount of intelligence and strength. They're not like monsters like goblins at all. Then I did keep it for you. Here's the reward for this one. I'm tired for now, and should we just find an inn and get some rest? Toe was yawning, so I suggested. I was introduced to the inn at the reception. Excuse me, ma'am. May I ask your name? So there was a man approaching Toe in the gap where he took his eyes off. I'm sorry about that. He's with me. Shall we go then? Wait. The man stopped us as we tried to keep Toe away from the man and take his hand and put the spot behind him. What is it? I laughed nicely. I don't see your face, but are you an adventurer? Yes, I started my adventurer today. I see you're new here. Then you don't have to know me. I see. So, let's get goblins out of here. Apparently. He was watching at the reception. Is eavesdropping on someone else's reception an adventurer or something? That's right. Then we'll do it. He's a bad attitude. More than that, it wouldn't even be a lot of money on low-ranking assignments such as goblin exorcism. I don't know, your lady. Are you satisfied with that? Is the purpose to after all? I wouldn't say goblins or anything like that hunting wolf or giant snake. You can even crusade that grizzled lead. You're staying at a cheap and tonight anyway right? What do you say? Why don't you come with me? It stinks of trouble. When you get tangled up in boulders like this many times, maybe I need to figure out how to shake myself. I was watching. I was rubbing it earlier. The man must be a healer. Not much then. It's like adventure is over before adventure, though I think I can satisfy you better than such a man. Come on, go with me. Come on, lightning. To exclaimed suddenly. The man is black scorched. Hot air is bubbling from his body. Uh, Toe? Go nagging Toe. I took Toe's hand and left my guild behind. Stop for a second. Toe. Toe stopped his leg. But I'm not going to turn around. Why aren't you saying anything? Toe says so with her back turned. I can't really answer that well. You can just say it back. Because you're so strong. I'm not angry because I'm strong. I can think of the best way because I can afford it. How can we get through that place without making a scene? You don't have to think about that. Don't you regret it? Make fun of me. Toe looked at me with her turned, moist A's. Tears were streaming from those moist A's. I regret. Massa Moon made a fool of me. I know you're thinking of me as this guy. Otherwise I shouldn't have done that. But I had no anger at all. Sorry. Thanks. Angry for me. Yeah, snorts Toe. I'll try to be as angry as I can next time. But it seems uncomfortable when the healer is strong, so I want to carry it peacefully. I don't want to have a fight. Toe replied small that she understood. Then I'll be angry. For Massa Moon. Did you really understand that? But I guess this is for me too. I couldn't say more when I thought about it that way. I said thank you again for now. Well. Let's go. I don't know if the problem was solved, 
but we headed to the inn. I knew this meat would taste good no matter how many times I ate it. Right. I was having dinner at the inn. Wallstein's meat is on the table. You've eaten Wallstein's meat before, haven't you? I don't. I've never eaten in Tanya Village before. Can you only eat Wallstein meat around here? Speaking of which, Mr. Sharon said the demons live in the Great Forest or something. Does it have anything to do with that? What were you eating at the castle? It's food that can boost your magic. My mother told me. Apparently they didn't tell me specifically. And the more I hear, the stranger it is. What is food that enhances magic? I definitely want to try it. You have to go to the Great Forest once. The castle with Toe might be there. Toe said, if you don't want to eat, can I eat? He was eating Wallstein's meat again. You'll definitely be stronger eating this meat. Cause I can try again for this meat Toe says happily. Will we all eat so much with the demons? We need to do a little more work tomorrow than we do today. I was able to handle it today because I also had the money for what Mr. Sharon made me grip. But not tomorrow either. Then it's time to go back to your room. I've already decided to go to bed today. The room had a simple bath. I was surprised that there was also a bath in the inn of the other world. There was no shower, but there was just a tub. It would be better. They say there are few inns with baths at low prices. They say this inn of hands will soon be full of adventurers, and we were lucky. I'll sleep on the floor, and Toe will use the bed. There's only one bed, so I can't help it. I don't know if the idea of Lady First is in this world. You can sleep on the other side. I'll sleep on this side. What? Did you have that idea? Come on, I'll catch a cold toe. I'm not a very good sleeper. I don't mind. Because I trust Massa Moon. Which means I trust you. I heard a girl in my class talking like this before. He didn't do anything. He fell asleep until morning. Seriously, I don't know what that means. Toe's a boxed daughter. And those guys are the broken legs of chastity. Comparisons and other verbal preaching. But I've heard these things have to go from men. I don't know. It's too deep to tell. What a profound word credit is. Apart from such reasoning, can it be indulged to that sweet fragrance? Hey, what are you doing? You're not going to sleep. I'm going to bed. I'm going to sleep. As Toe told me, I went into bed. It's okay. I'm just going to bed. Everyone can sleep if they meditate on their eyes. Common sense. I can't sleep. I don't feel like I can sleep at all. Hey, have you slept yet? Not yet. My voice is cramped. You don't have to look at me objectively to find out that I look bad right now. I was always alone in the castle. Because my father and mother wouldn't be home till night, my sister wouldn't be home forever, and when I said she was talking to me, she was only about Pixie. I missed her every day. Suddenly Toe said so. But I don't miss you now. Because I'm with Massa Moon. Toe's hand touched his back. At that time, I felt like something like Toe's credit was flowing into me. Good night. Massa Moon. Oh, good night, Toe. I was asleep when I realized. Excuse me. Do you have Lord Nito? I woke up with the sound of someone knocking on the door of the room. MMM. What's up? Looks like Toe woke up. Too. I got out of bed and opened the door. Good morning, Lord Naito. It wasn't until yesterday that I was standing there dressed differently. Mr. Sierra looks like he's not even wearing the white armor he was seeing under his robe today. Good morning, Mr. Sierra. What's going on? To this point. No, I thought I'd teach Lord Naito swordsmanship. Speaking of which, I thought you said that. They heard about us in the guild. Speaking of which, I don't see Lord To. What's wrong? Massa Moon. Toe walked over here rubbing her eyes. Become. Mr. Sierra lost his word when he saw Toe's outfit. Shirt disturbed by shorts. Shit. Lord Naito. Who is you? Mr. Sierra's hand hits my left cheek hard. Why should he be in front of the room in the morning? What are you doing to Massa Moon? Dot. Whoa, whoa. Calm down, Toe. Misunderstood Mr. Sierra. Toe. You. What were you trying to do now? Something was glowing at my feet. See again the dragon's heart unleashed something similar on me. It's when I put out a stupid big fire. I thought I saw a light similar to that one. But the light immediately converged because it stopped. But I felt something tingling in my spine. I was having breakfast at the inn. I hear Mr. Sierra has already eaten. I'm sorry about earlier. By my earliest. The inn almost blew up. And Toe is still a little angry. Because I don't care anymore. I laughed bitterly. Excuse me, Mr. Sierra was apologizing again. By the way, it seems Lord To called me Massa Moon earlier about Lord Naito. Ah, that's. It was a breeze. No, 
it's fine, just the name anyway. It seems impossible to hide it from that. I explained to Mr. Sierra that it was a pseudonym, so please keep doing it in public. I see, thought it was an unusual name. Okay, by the way, how will you spend the day? Cared if I could ask, Mr. Sierra asked. In the meantime, I'm thinking about taking a request at the guild. Because I don't have any money. I see, then will you let me accompany you, too? I'm an adventurer, too. Apparently, the knights of this country are required to register adventurers. Mr. Sierra was an A-rank adventurer. I was wondering if I could get a higher paying request. Request for an F-rank adventurer is up to E-rank, but even in the case of requests that fall above the D-rank, if there are adventurers of that rank, they are allowed to accompany them. It's easier to get to the next level. Toe seemed a little dissatisfied. What would be good? Lord Naito seems alright. A request is sticking out on the guild's bulletin board. I thought so. Can the White King Knight, who does not publicly appear, show his face to the Alliance twice yesterday and today? No problem. Because only those who know the face of the White King Knight know, and I'm not here as a knight right now. Apparently, the White King Knight lives disputed and normal by ordinary people. Mr. Sierra, what is this? I can't read the letters, but just in case, you can't be enlightened. That's Kalane. Kalane? What is it? Kalane is a giant beast that lives in the woods. Two big horns are the main characteristic. Toe sounds like the first name I've ever heard. I don't know, so it's up to me. Then this is it. I finished the process at the reception. So Mr. Sierra said he needed help. So he asked for Sharon's shop across the street. Hello. Oh, Sierra. Are you off work today? Yes. So I came to buy Katrine pills to go hunting Kalane. Katrine pills? Asked Mr. Sierra. Yes. Kalane comes to seal the other person's actions with his voice. This helps protect your hearing. So it's mandatory when you take a request from Kalane. Looks like you need a lot of knowledge to hunt monsters. Oh, look closely. Isn't that yesterday's healer and paladin lady? Haven't you noticed that before? What? Lord Toe is the paladin. Ah. Mr. Sharon had the expression shit on his face. No, my mouth slipped, he says in a blatant manner. I didn't know Lord Toe was a paladin. I'm surprised. I was surprised, too. I didn't know you knew Sierra. Paladin is more surprising, said Sierra. According to Mr. Sierra's story, paladin is rare but there is one in the White King. Ah. Mr. Sierra suppressed his mouth when he made sure it was okay to talk lightly. I laughed bitterly when I said, that's about it. Not at all. What does the lightness of these people's mouths mean? It's a forest I visited to exorcise goblins. Now I'm just looking forward. I knew from afar that several adventurers were somehow sitting out in front of the woods. What the hell happened? There are four adventurers. Inside were those who were bleeding from their arms or bandaged in their faces. He was attacked by something. I went into the woods looking for an oak. There was nothing at first. As usual, it was an irreplaceable forest but suddenly the atmosphere changed. Instead of goblins, they run off somewhere as far as oaks and hunting wolves. The adventurers have a frightened look at something. I should have turned back at that point. That was Kalane. It's out of our hands. Not even. But that Kalane looked different somewhere. I've seen it several times before. But it wasn't like that. My whole body glowed. Anyway, wrapped in grains of light. Is it a grain of light? and Mr. Sierra seems to have some idea. It was then, I heard a bad ear contact from the woods. Can I just call it a cut of gold? It feels like a sting. It's him. And one of the adventurers. That guy. I guess he's not following us. Mouth watering and agitation about example monsters. The birds fly away with the noise of the trees from the woods. I heard the same ringing again, and then it was a vibration. Something seems to be approaching. Definitely following the smell of our blood. Get up. We're getting away to the fence. Put your strength into your wounded body and try to leave the spot. It was then, he shows up with a gruesome oddity. Dot. It's him. He's coming after me. The fright of the adventurers is at its peak. Run away. We'll hold it down here. Also, I'm sorry. Let's go, guys. The adventurers turned their backs and ran away with their bumpy feet. I listened to you and I had predictions. This is not Kalane. It's not Kalane. Not Kalane. Hairless reptile-like body. The horns. Resemble reindeer. My face is like a sheep. But the body is many times bigger than the bear I've seen in the zoo. Glowing particles are floating. Lord Massamoon. And Mr. Sierra, who doesn't already call him Naito. Yes. Replied cheerfully than usual. Is your body okay? Dot body? Yes. I'm fine. I wondered what the question was, 
and Mr. Sierra had a painful look on his face. My body is lightly cramped. My legs seem to move but Toll looks the same. It's a boulder. Kalane's voice seals the opponent's movements just by listening. There's a load on the triple tube. The same goes for Nut Kalane. But it doesn't compare to just Kalane. Is the stiffness slowly coming apart? Only the mouth seems to move. Kalane's crusade is a request for A rank. But this guy himself seems to be a B-rank monster. But Nut Kalane is different. This guy is a genuine A-rank. Among other things, in this case, because of the wide range of odd voices and the frenzy, if a request is made, it seems to be put up as a hazardous request. Lord Massamoon's power once, I've only seen it for a moment too, but if... Can I leave it to you, is it okay? Yes, of course. Nut Kalane was a weak monster at level 32. This pressing air makes me feel farcical. Toe, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine now apparently the stiffness has been solved. Then I will go, Lord Massamoon. Mr. Sierra ran out. Toe, I need Mr. Sierra's backup. Don't worry about me. Okay, ice moves. Mr. Sierra attacked from the left. Ice paths appear from the foot toward the destination gliding through the meadows quickly. Ice blade freeze enchant. I could see the ice wrapping around the lapier I set up. Accelerate to the present and approach, where you swing the ice wrapped rapier down towards Nut Kalane's right foot. And it was bounced. Again. I couldn't. Mr. Sierra, who immediately retreated. Sounds like an assumption. Lightning. To unleashed an electric shock. Electric shocks pour down more than the magic formations that appeared over Nut Kalane's head. But for some reason, the magic was wiped out. Massa Moon, the magic won't work. I've heard that Nut Kalane manipulates magic in the corners. Let's destroy the corners first, Mr. Sierra suggests. Particles of light floating around began to gather at the corner of Nut Kalane. Probably, he looks like he's gonna do something. I felt signs of braces from the look of it. It turns out Nut Kalane roared. Mr. Sierra avoided it critically and toe somehow. Massa Moon. I'm coming. A magic formation was appearing at Toe's feet. Lightning roar. Two demonic squares appeared as if they had just been erected in front of each other. With the roar, a strong flash was emitted. Electric shock. The electric shock heads straight into the line and hits the corner of Nut Kalane directly. It's a boulder, a paladin. Toe was a little lit. But the electric shock was undone. Can't we still do this? Perhaps the magic will be played. Mr. Sierra was weak at no time. The moment he released the brace, I saw the light that was covering my body disappearing for a moment. Probably if you aim for that gap. Can you do damage? Said Sierra. Probably. It is possible to aim for that moment. But will Mr. Sierra be alright? It would be the effect of a nod voice. Looks pretty tight. Choose the safest way here. I'll go. Toe signaled with his eyes. Mr. Sierra, who answers the question. I understand. Then at least govern me. No, I'm fine. Cause it'll be over soon. So he activated divine speed and rode to the moment over Nut Kalane's head. You haven't noticed. It's a big deal. Surgical destruction. Soul Blake. A political sect that got the feel of a glass breaking. As I thought, I smile. Apparently, it included a surgical ceremony. I realized that monsters have magic too. The light that was wrapping Nut Kalane extinguishes like it was suddenly switched off. Behold. The magic now. Nut Kalane stripped of clothes. The far-sighted Sierra doesn't know what the political ministry did. The same goes for Toe. When the political section grabbed the left corner of Nut Kalane, it broke thoughtfully. Doesn't give me a rambling Nut Kalane, plus folds the right corner. All right, that's okay. Again I took the distance to the two of us in divine speed. Now the magic should come through. No way, horns. Said Sierra. There was just one more thing I wanted to try for the political sect. That is based on one incident in the village of Tanya. That was when I stuck a knife in Oliver Joe's neck. I made it. It wasn't even critical. Is the boulder called Divine Speed? I have to thank Sean. I don't know what to explain to Sierra. It's a bad thing. Oliver Joe is dead in front of me. And I don't hesitate to poke. My nerves got thicker while I was there. Oliver Joe, LV, 37. Crusade activated the unique skill Guardian of the Goddess. Choose your loot. Ah, uh, skill, fire armor, fire armor, skill, fire attribute enhancement, skill, raging spear, magic, one speed of fire, fire soul, magic, flaming hammer, devorcade, item, havoc of flames, item, Oliver's letter. Ah, uh, I see, was Oliver a flame user? More importantly, 
What does it mean to have a magic name for some skills? Can magic be used as a skill? I was interested in the flaming Havard, but I choose nature and Oliver's letter. A letter with a heterogeneous atmosphere that was on the list. I looked inside. I see. I can't read. I couldn't have read a letter or anything without knowing the letters of this world. The letter then glows slightly. Strange things happened. I understood the text. Make sure you don't have to look through the letters so that meaning comes into your head. The letter states that I didn't become a knight because I wanted to. In addition, the name of one woman named Anna appeared in the letter. Anna looks like the wife she's left behind in her hometown. Oliver seemed worried about Anna that he had left behind in his hometown. I built up a workout for her and got the captain's seat. But he didn't want this either. Battle of the Uranos Meadows, as captain of the Ashes Regiment, Oliver said he was fierce in this battle. Returning from the war, Oliver learns that Anna was captured and killed by a burglar. The body was found unbroken when he saw it. You better not look. Anna's father told me. That's what it said. Oliver lost his temper to live in despair. They laughed at Oliver like that. Oliver's anger was noted in the second half. That means killing the king. I didn't just kill him. It was the night I returned to the village of Tanya that I learned the contents of this letter. It was after everyone had calmed down. The letter was fragmented, impulsive and there were parts of it that were like beatings and writings. It's hard to understand the whole thing. I felt like I didn't have enough words in the letter itself. Why was Oliver resenting the king? That bothered me. The announcement rang in my head as I turned the letter into a different space storage. I have mastered the magic fire, check status immediately. Ah, uh, magic, fire. Fire created by Oliver Joe's resentment. This fire slowly burns the target audience over time. Ah, uh, I regretted that I should have left it at Havard. Why should I master such a mass of resentment? Besides, I picked an item because I can't use attribute magic. In the end, what I got was Oliver Joe's information and fire attribute magic. But I didn't think there was a pattern I could master by reading the letter. Maybe it was good in the sense that you knew something you didn't. But I've got magic I can't use. I say it's better than not. But I don't know if I can use it. There's no better or shit. I figured out if I could use it somehow. I chanted a spell and wondered if there would be a fire even for a moment. But this sorcery didn't have a magic name in the first place. And that's where the unique skill the flip prank, pole, is. I tried everything in the dungeon before. But the erosion wave disparies aura was too much. I had forgotten that other magic could be inverted. And used flipped prank, pole, for fire. You should probably be okay with this. I broke the corner, and I won't be able to use the magic anymore. Nut Kalane is rambling as he rubs his head against the ground. Was there a nerve going through the corner as well? Magic? Dot. Was that magic? Mr. Sierra is surprised. Probably. Um, if it's good, it's that Nut Kalane. Could you give it to me? I didn't mean to give in. What does that mean? I need to try something. Ha. Huh. Of course I don't mind that. Mr. Sierra was puzzled as to why. I've been waiting for this opportunity. It's that power you used to heal. What would Oliver's magic do? Can toe back off a bit, too? Toe, who understood the behavior, moved behind me. Was it quite painful? Still rubbing my head. And so I put my hand forward. The goddess's blood tears, dies Bradley. This is it. Magic inflicted by inverting fire. The moment I spoke to my voice. The red and black shadows were loose from my body. Become, what is this? Said Sierra. I forgot to tell you. But please keep this to yourself. I should have told you in advance. I'm also trying to satisfy myself with a little disregard for Sean's advice right now. But you can't take care of it. With this. But I want to know. The magical power that I can use. Foot of Nut Kalane. There. A magic formation emerged that emitted enough red and black light to envelop the giant. Odd voices make wooden spirits. Apparently, the magic team is holding me captive and I can't move. And there I felt a strange vibe, different from the usual. Directly above Nut Clane, a crack appeared in the sky. Cracks gradually spread. Then eight fingers appeared from the crack gap. It's a finger the size of which I don't think belongs to a person. The pointy nails are red as blood. That was trying to force me to rip the crack off. Eight fingers distorted and tore the space apart. Massa moon. That toe pointed. My hands are shaking. I see red and black eyes in the crack. Funny thing. I could understand it was some kind of eye. A woman with even clearer white skin. Perhaps that's the goddess. The eyes of the goddess were red and black. Tears of blood flowing from her eyes, conveying her cheeks. The goddess peered into Nutkalane directly below. Foo. 
a muscle of tears falls from my eyes, attracted by gravity, the blood tears fell straight. At that moment, Nutkale nuttered a gruesome oddity. I can't move my body, but I'm suffering. I immediately understood why. The goddess's tears were melting the flesh. It penetrated and there was a hole in the fallen area. Countless blood tears poured down like a tatami. Chance of precipitation 100%. Red rain on the snow. There were holes everywhere, and when I realized it, even the original shape was gone. Something even stranger was happening. The falling blood tears did not go outside the magic formation, and they continued to accumulate. Even something like an invisible wall on the edge of the magic formation. It's like even the beakers we use in science experiments are watching. Blood builds up on the beaker. The giant was buried and invisible to sinking into the blood. Was it deadly? When I saw it, the goddess slowly returned into the crack. For a moment, I felt like I had eyes. Are you conscious? What have I called for? The crack was completely blocked. At that moment, the magic formations that were glowing red and black disappeared and the beaker disappeared. Until then, the blood tears that accumulated are zero at once. It was a short time ago. There is a sea of blood spread out on one side of the perimeter. You're done. No reply. Both Mr. Sierra and Toe were solidified, staring at the sight in front of them. Indeed. Misery is a terrible thing, so nauseating. And I heard a horse squeal in the distance. When I look, I see a white knight across the horse, probably informed by the adventurers who evacuated earlier. Toe. Apparently, the knights of the king's capital are coming. Let's get out of here before they find us. Ha. Huh. Come on give me your hand. Let's get out of here. Dot right. Toe still confused. Okay. So, Mr. Sierra. Well, I don't really want them to know. Is it? About this magic, something else, I revealed to Sierra because I thought she was worthy of credit, dot. Slow reply, later, please. We're back in King's Landing first, so we'll meet up later. That's what I'm saying. Activate God's speed. I took charge of Toe and rushed the meadow to a moment. Time goes back. Excuse me, Master Reinhardt, dot what? There. There was the figure of one knight. My personality is a white coat. I had brown hair enough to hide my ears. Reinhard Rickman, the White King Knight. In the forest of Grill, we have information that Kalein has emerged that brings together luminescent particles, a hasty decree. Light emitting particles. I see. What about the informant? It's for injured adventurers. I am currently receiving an allowance in the infirmary. In their story, Three adventurers are still engaged. Reinhardt touched his jaw with a bare gesture of thought. Well, one woman inside said she was using rapier with silver hair. Dot I get the story, Reinhardt begins. Took the sword placed on the sheath. Tell Reed. He said Sierra was engaged with Nutkalane. Wang Du main entrance. There were two White King knights. One is Reinhardt, and one more. The name of this silver-haired woman is Hilda Garat. It's Sierra's sister. The people had their eyes open with who they were. That was the same thing for a soldier. When they look at the pure white coat on their knees, they think with all their heart. That's the White King knight I hear rumors about. But anxiety strikes there. That the White King Knight is here. Because it means danger. What is happening in this country? What the White King Knights realize is confusing and frightening. This is. You too. Get there soon. That was fast. Reed. Thought I'd be a little late. That creepy way of talking. It'll stop. Chilled Hilda. Here's Reed Black. One of the White King Knights. Even I. The Boulder. Can't be late if Nutkalane comes out. Long time no see. They're putting together particles that emit light. First of all, I'm pretty sure. Then let's go early. You're right there anyway. Go before your sister screws you. Ah, uh, Hilda. Hilda stared sharply. A tone I don't think of as a knight in the kingdom. A look like a bad guy. That's a man named Reed. Traditionally, he jumped out the main gate and ran through the meadows to the forest of Greel. Probably over there. No. Something's wrong. Reinhardt noticed the disturbing air. And that's when. I felt a strange breeze on my skin for a moment. I can look back, but there's nothing there. What's up? Said subsequent Reed. No. It's nothing. Let's hurry. But when the line reached Sierra, what I saw was the figure of Sierra standing intact. And it was a sea of blood spreading on one side. Hey, hey, hey. What the hell is this bloodbath? I thought you were here. Where the hell are you? Not Kalein. The prey has been plundered. The voice absurd Reed. It was supposed to be a long fight for Reed. Probably. That would be it. Reinhardt pointing to the ocean in front of him. It's Reinhardt. That's what they say. And can you say yes? You can't believe it. That's why I can't help it. By the way, Sierra, 
What happened here? Sierra looked like she wasn't here. Sierra. And Hilda, sister. Sierra looked at Hilda as she reacted to her voice. Sierra, what the hell happened here? Sierra was remembering the magic of the political sect. I can't get the woman's eyes out of my head when she shows up from that crack. I, there must be two more adventurers in the information. Sierra, what happened to the others? Reinhardt said. Dot, they're gone. Dot. Not here. What does that mean? I don't think you defeated that one alone. We need at least four White King Knight level adventurers. And I did it so well. Read tears up. What would I do to get that far in the gutter? Did you do that, Sierra? Asks Sierra as she nibbles. That or maybe those guys, they didn't eat him. Hiccup. If so, I can snort at you. Read, shut up for a second. Hilda glanced. Dot Reinhardt leaks a sigh. You've contacted Wang Du for now. Let's get that one back. Reinhardt sighed and crossed over to the horse throne room. There was a Reinhardt figure there. It was Sierra who buried it. Arnold Razorson. He is the current king of the king's capital. Depending on the scene, it seems to be by Sierra. I just don't know for sure because my condition is unstable. I thought it would be better if we waited for the conclusion. I'll leave this to you, Reinhardt. Finishing his gaze, Reinhardt followed among kings. Oh, isn't that Reinhardt? Have you seen Grandpa? That's disrespectful, Daniel. The name of this giant man is Daniel King. The White King Knight. Brown skin and rigid arms. Features a resilient flesh. Ha. Huh. Is it true that Nat Kalane came out more than that? We're investigating. So, who did it? We're investigating. What the hell? You can tell me a little bit. It's something I know anyway. You're going to tear it up soon anyway, right? Sigh small. Honestly, I don't know anything right now. It was Sierra who was there. You should hear it from her if you want to know. However, the autopsy team is looking into it now. If you wait, you'll find out. Reinhardt was pale. Daniel would look at Reinhardt like that and he'd be naughty. What? Frowning Reinhardt. We'll see. Something's caught on, isn't it? Dot the number of adventurers in combat is three, according to witness stories. One of them is Sierra. The latter two were not there when they rushed. It was a sea of flesh and blood from Nut Kalane. Sea of blood? Oh, a body so damaged that it loses its original form. There was a huge amount of blood filling the area. Dot I see. Is that what you mean? The answer is those two. Probably. I guess Sierra knows. But I won't talk. You can interrogate me, he said. I'm not going to ask those who don't talk. But even if you don't talk. I'll have you fulfill your responsibilities as a White King Knight. If you are covering up those who do harm to this country, just say that it has the corresponding consequences. Even if you don't hurry, the results will always follow. It's cold, you are, Daniel shrugged. But if those two did, they're not the only ones. I don't know if it's both or one, but it means we're strong in line, or more. Ha! Huh. Daniel laughed high. You don't have that. Don't joke. Are you telling me you're stronger than you are? I don't know for sure. Daniel understood from Reinhardt's expression. Reinhardt is a man who doesn't joke. Enemy or ally? Either way, that's the only thing that matters. By the way, you, it's already noon. Daniel's words unintentionally interrupted. What's up? I questioned it, because Reinhardt's expression turned into something disturbing. This magic, read. Oh sure, it's his. The two sensed a wave of magic and soon followed the royal castle. I was sitting on a bench in the square of the old town. This was an almost unpopular place. I talked to To about his unique skills. That, thanks to this, even healers can use attack magic. That that magic was originally Oliver's. I didn't know it was magic until I used it. To listen to me until the end. Just shut up. Well, for example. Can you use that for gear? Maybe I can use it. I've never tried it. What would happen if I used it for the wrath of the virgin? Now I'm just freaking out thinking. No, I'm excited. Honestly, I want to use it. Right. You can't use fire magic in a healer. So, then I thought I could use it, and I tried it, and you're saying that one came out? Well, I'm not sure what that was either, but I might as well not use it cheaply from now on. I was thinking. Perhaps a monster to that extent would have been able to defeat you without having to use magic. The corners are so broken, like goblins, you could have defeated them with your bare hands. Not only did I want to try, I wanted to show the two of you my powers. Maybe he wanted to show that he wasn't incompetent. That was the mistake. I was floating because I came to another world. It's okay was Toe's voice. Because I will help Massa Moon. I've thought about it for a long time. Why, Toe? If Massa Moon says he can't use his powers, 
because I'll do my best. My mother, my father, my sister were no match for me. But still, I stared at Toe. Give her a desperate answer. Thanks, Toe. Hey, Toe. I've been meaning to ask you, why, then, did Toe just trust me the first time she saw me? I jammed the A word. It's Lord Massamoon. Lord Toe. So my voice sandwiched and looked back. I saw Mr. Sierra. I left a letter at the inn saying, give me this when a silver-haired woman comes to see us. Another time, tell me. I said that to Toe in my ear. Yeah, Toe nodded. Um. Were you taking it in? No, I'm fine. I'm sorry I got here. No, these places would be more convenient. So what happened? But I could speculate on the phrase convenient. That story, Nut Kalane was recovered by the autopsy squad. I've laid low about Lord Massa Moon and Lord Toe, so I don't think you'll have to worry about finding them. But I can't cover them. Really? Thank you. Um, what happens to the reward for the request? It was Kalane's crusade and I knew the reward was. There's no reason to say right now about that. If the subject of the crusade is different from the content of the request, the procedure becomes necessary, but I was wondering if it would be difficult to look at the situation right now. Really, I have no choice but to reward you. I just need to get another request. All the more so if Lord Massamoon wants to hide that he is, in this case, a crusaded person. I think you need to wait a moment. Is there no choice in carrying things peacefully? And what shall we do today? I don't have any money, and I can't stay at the inn with this. Um. If you don't mind, what about you staying at my house tonight? That was an unexpected suggestion. Are you at Mr. Sierra's house? I'd greatly appreciate it. Okay, absolutely. Mr. Sierra smiled nicely. There is an empty room, and Lord Massamoon is grateful for your help, both of you. Please come home. Well, let me sweeten your words. The lightness of the mouth is problematic, but Mr. Sierra is gentle. I have to thank you. I see. So, that's them? I heard a crouched voice. Looking back, a man was looking at us. Read. Mr. Sierra leaking his voice. With the look of near, near and the high, the man observes this one. Why are you here? said Sierra. Why not? It's easy. Nut Kalane has a nasty ability to disable witchcraft, so magic doesn't work. Sword and fist. I mean, physical attacks are the only way to kill him. You can also temporarily suppress your abilities by destroying corners, but you don't normally do it, because it's too strong, and it takes time to break it. It wasn't even hard. Interpretation, horn. That's why we have to do it physically. But that's not a sword, a hammer, or a spear. It was obviously due to magic. Otherwise, oh. I can't explain that tragedy. In other words, he destroyed Nut Kalane's horn and killed him with sorcery. The wounded adventurer informs the soldiers at the gate and learns about it sooner than we, the White King Knights, can rush. Reed saw Mr. Sierra with an invincible grin. Sierra, you can't do this. You can't kill that one. Too inexperienced. I don't have enough power. I don't think you destroyed the horn. Then someone else. I don't think I can use enough witchcraft for you to ground that one. Then someone else. And Reed saw me and toe. There's no way a guy like that could get killed by Nut Kalane. Because he can do that. He's clearly out of the ordinary. I don't know how to kill you. When I saw the body. I thought. He said he only thought that killing the precision beast was enough to kill horn rabbit or goblin. Obviously the dimensions are different. You can't overlook a white king knight like that. Reed put out a lump of fire flat in his hand and extended it. The fire took the form of a long, bent stick, from which one large sickle appeared when the fire went out. So, when, Reed, they are not enemies. You're not the one who decides that. It's me. I can see the rush from Mr. Sierra's expression. I mean, did Mr. Sierra ever suspect you from the beginning? And then I followed I interrupted the story. That's the thing, Reed sees this one. I don't know why you're sheltering. You, what's your name? Dot I tried to answer my name, and Toe came forward to block it. What the hell? Toe Trucka. Nut Kalane was killed by me. Toe glanced at Reed. I didn't know you were a woman. Reed grinned, trembling into small pieces. I sure don't feel anything from that guy over there. But you're not. I feel magic from you. I called on Toe back because I'm fine. Massa Moon back off and don't look back. I only told him that if it seemed dangerous, he would come in to help. Toe pulls his sword out of his waist and sets it up. I see, there's no gap. At first glance, it's a trained sword technique. I don't know any sword moves. I have no idea. Reed, listen to me. Sue, Mr. Sierra, they are my friends. We met on the way back to Wang Capital, and we took care of a lot of people. Well, 
that's a tough one, I laughed with my nose. Desperate persuasion is also empty. Then let's go. I ran out for Toe. Toe sets up a sword. The shock of a sword crossing echoed the square. Toe was sickling. A clever artist. This, then, is not a razor. I'll use it first. I am irritated by Toe's sword moves. Fire armor. The flaming armor covered Reed's body. Sierra complains to stop. But it doesn't sound like Reed. Oops. Not yet. The flame that covered Reed's body swept passing on his arms and concentrating on the sickle blade. The flaming sickle approaches Toe. Thor receives again with his sword. Gu it doesn't work like it did earlier. The moment the blade came into contact with the blade, the flame flared on Toe's arm. Toe. I couldn't help screaming. It's okay. So, why don't you use magic? Encouraged Toe to use magic. But because it's okay, Toe says. That's all. Then this sickle can't be prevented. You don't get it unless you try. Toe's breathing is rough. I guess the boulder will break my bones. I couldn't prevent it if I didn't wrap it around the flame. Unilaterally, it just becomes a sickle. Hey, are you kidding me? You don't think I can kill you with that sword? Just choose your magic. This is all I can do, but Toe doesn't try to use magic. Dot well, apparently he wants to die. Reed came to Toe to exasperate himself from the killing. Toe, I was going to leave it to you, but I can't wait any longer. I was on my way out, but then, a strange man appears in front of him. Dot what are you going to do? Reed stopped moving, out of the way. That's this line, said the man. What are you doing here? Reed, a stranger asked me, Reed with a stopped hand. Toe, I rushed over and immediately healed Toe's burns with healing magic. Fortunately, the wound healed in an instant leaving no marks. Are you all right, Toe? Dot yeah. I'm glad it didn't leave a scratch, but why didn't you use magic? You could have done something with magic, couldn't you? My magic, because there will be damage around. Dot ceased. There is a house here, where people live. Toe knew that if he used magic, he would cause damage to the residents around him. I'm sorry. I'm upset, Mr. Sierra. Never mind. Mr. Sierra is nothing wrong. Sooner or later. I think this was happening. Reminds me of Sean's words. He told me to hide my power. Reinhardt, this woman is. He's the one who killed the beast. So what's up? What? So what's wrong with you? Tell me he is. I didn't decide I was an enemy. They just crusaded the monsters as requested. Then why do you run away? You don't need to run, do you? The answer is simple. You had a disease. You're talking hypothetical. I don't know. He's a bastard, frustrated Reed. Hey, hey. Is that priest? Reed was staring at this one. Have you noticed the healing magic? Dot healer. What? Your mouth is loose and ugly. And laughed high. A healer, you say? Ha ha ha. I see. I'm not supposed to feel anything from you by reason. That's right. He's a healer. Watching this man reminds me of Sub. Reed laughed high and looked down on the way he had won. But in the meantime, there were those who didn't miss out on Reed's bullshit. Reinhardt. Nothing. I don't feel it. Reinhardt turned his consciousness to the boy in front of him. And ask yourself, stupid. That shouldn't be. Hey, you. Reinhardt tried to speak up to the political ministry. But. Reinhardt. If you're unwilling, you shut up there and watch. Sickle up and Reed moves all over his body. I'll do it. You too. Stand up Reinhardt. Scatter me and, Reed Sickle approaches the political sect, come on, Reed, that's him, desperate advice, you're being mean, shut the fuck up, but it doesn't reach Reed, at that moment, what Reinhardt feared happened, it just happened for a moment, sugar smoke stuck in the square with a big shake, Reinhardt turned away and protected his face with his arms, I narrow my eyes and look over the square where smoke made my vision worse, there's someone in the smoke, it was the center of the square, but I have bad vision and I can't see my face, the smoke gradually fades, and then you see the whole thing, Reinhardt was stunned, there was a crater big enough to swallow the whole square, plus its center, there was a look of Reed slipping into the ground and losing consciousness as he peeled off his white A's, what? This is Reinhardt loses his word, but I knew, what happened and who did it, when the smoke completely disappeared, it was the political sect that saw it, looking down at the unconscious Reed, I mean, you killed Nat Kalane, Teng himself, you mean, Massa Moon, Toe's voice, Toe, who was supposed to be there until earlier, was in a residential neighborhood that somehow left the square. Also next door is the figure of Sierra. Reinhardt understood to the two without trauma. We evacuated the two of them to a safe place and slammed Reed to the ground. That too, in that moment. But technically not. The political sect just punched him with his fist. In other words, 
Reinhardt has not seen any movement in the political sect. I see, Reinhardt's hand turned to nature and the sword at his hips. Then I'll brace my stomach too. In the name of the White King Knight, I will discuss you here. I pointed my sword at the political sect. Wait. Reinhardt. Sierra rushed. And in between. Listen. This is a misunderstanding. Lord Massamoon is my friend and not my enemy. Please, put down your sword. Reinhardt, Reinhardt knew before he was persuaded, meaning of the gaze Sierra is pointing at herself, doubt, they are not enemies, return to me in Sierra's words and restore calm, Reinhardt staring at his own sword tip, ahead is the political sect, then how do you explain this, refers to a submerged square, but that's a word out of agitation, that's because Reed hurt Lord Toe, so Lord Massa Moon, Reinhardt is clever, but he was struck by a political anomaly, and he was losing his cool, Reinhardt knew as soon as he arrived at the square, he said this was an outrage by Reed's discretion, probably wanted to make sure of the power, how far your powers work, and I thought of a good reason, and I put my sword to the story with it, Reinhardt tells himself to remain calm, dot sorry, I was not calm I laid my sword, Sierra relieves, how did you figure that out? The political ministry inquired. Reed said he didn't feel anything from you. But that can't happen. Everyone has magic. And it can feel how small it is. But there are exceptions. Exception? If you had enough magic to overpower yourself, Reinhardt vaguely acknowledged the power of the political sect. I can sense it if it's a little too much. This means that the magic is so immense that it cannot be perceived. But, I'm sorry, I couldn't stop this guy. It's on me. I don't care about anything emotionless voice color. We just don't want to stand out. You are usually asked as an adventurer to be rewarded once you have achieved it, that's all. It's just not like Reed, who has been pointing his sword at the dark cloud. The political sect lifted its guard. Let's make sure the reward is paid at a later date. I will not speak out on this matter, but there's no reason not to report it to the state. So two adventurers reported to the country covering Sierra, said Sierra only crusaded. I wonder. Oh, that's okay. So can I take Reed? Pointed to the man who had plunged into the ground. I'm still one of my men. Go ahead. Reinhardt held Reed on his shoulder, and as I remembered something, I turned to the political ministry. With that said, did you say Massa Moon? Dot I was flattered by my sweetness. Dot well. Reinhardt convinced on his own. Then Massa Moon. I did something very sorry this time. I'll see you. That's what Reinhardt left behind. The remaining political sects look over the square. This. You wouldn't even be charged, would you? Dot grinning Sierra. I sat back in peace. I had just finished reporting to King Arnold. Reinhardt is the leader of the White King Knights. Orders to the White King Knights take place through Reinhardt. Reinhardt after the hall. If it's enough to hide. You shouldn't have followed me. In front of the shaken liner heart was Daniel, who was also on the wall. This is my stance. But that lady seemed to notice. Don't turn a disgusting smile on me. So, how'd it go? You're as cold as ever, you are. Dot I see a ghost behind Ryan Hart. Not to mention the joke, that fine beast seems to be doing so strangely. Weird. Oh, they hardly had the original form, and it took them a while to restore it. But that's what I've figured out. It is Daniel's habit not to carry the important things around. It was empty. Dot Reinhardt frowned. The autopsy team checked inside when they realized they were thinner than normal. They were empty inside. Speak specifically. Empty is. It means the way it is. I didn't have any guts. I mean, it was dead from the beginning. I see. I mean, there's someone behind it. A monster mutant, so to speak. The triggers vary. Once upon a time. A certain spirit did evil to a monster. The monster, whose magic control stopped working, broke out in town. Monsters who have been pranked by the spirit. I mean, it's a fine beast. Who's trying to do what? I don't even think this is going to end. We need to investigate that forest tomorrow. Okay. There is imminent danger in this country. That's what Reinhardt intuited. The next day. An investigation team was sent to the woods. The soldiers searched desperately for traces. But no matter how much you look for it, it's an unusual forest there. The investigation team was unable to find anything. Old town of Razorson, Wang Capital. There is a shop in that picture that says Waterfowl Pavilion. Adventurers are, of course, residents and those who stopped by this country. Those who visit this country for various reasons soothe their hearts with alcohol. In the corner seats were two men who hid their faces with a hood. I didn't think there was such an out of common sense person. Who is he? 
The man asked. I have nothing to worry about. I'm just an adventurer. I'm not from this country. The woman across the street answers. I was relieved to hear that. The next time someone who doesn't know why comes out again, the plan won't go forward. But he said he missed the White King Knight in this case. No problem. Monsters will have as many of them as they want. You don't seem to understand how hard I've had to find that beast. It has nothing to do with this plan, like your hard work. Okay? Wrinkles between the man's brows. Precision beasts are not so easy to find. It's not like being in more than one forest in the first place. It's rare enough to say it was born by accident. Then you can take me from the different woods. No, that's no longer necessary. What do you mean? Fran will arrive tomorrow in Wangdu. That woman? The woman in the hood was sweating from her forehead. Yes. That said, you didn't like her, did you? Dot the woman glared at the man across the street. Let me tell you. No one has a better talent than her. I'm not interested in your hobby. Go ahead. Ha. Huh. Okay, he sighed. Bring me Nutkalane's body. Apparently, it's been recovered. I can't move on without that. Tomorrow, please, by the time she arrives. Okay, then I'll get it tonight. Please. The woman took a seat and left the store. One of the men left poured honey liquor into his mouth with an invincible grin. I was coming to Mr. Sierra's house. There are gates far beyond my height. Beyond the gate is a spacious garden. Big mansion ahead. The rich. Japan is a billionaire. I see. Was Mr. Sierra a lady? No, I'm a true knight. With ladies. Mr. Sierra laughed bitterly. Oh, Sierra. Welcome home. Mother. That. In front of a guest. Not much of that way of saying. A large chandelier illuminating the front door. A staircase bigger than necessary. This high ceiling and vast space, which will no doubt never hit you in the head. Boulders, rich people are different. Do we need such a large staircase? I don't think there's anyone big enough to live in this staircase. If you're Sierra, I can't believe you're my mother again. You're my mum. Mother. Keep your mouth shut for a moment. So. Who are you? It was Mr. Sierra's mother who welcomed me. What a delightful man. That Sierra twitched. I knew Mr. Sierra was a lady. Lord Massamoon, please. There's no need to say anything else about this. I saw an unknown side of Mr. Sierra. I feel like I got it. Ha. Huh. This is Lord Massamoon and Lord Toe. Massamoon and Toe. Frowning Sierra mum. Yeah, that means you're the knit guy right? And to the lightness of the mouth is a drawback. Mr. Sierra must have spoken. It's good to see you. Looks like Sierra took care of you. By the way, I heard. Naito. Not Massa Moon. Are you strong? Anything like rescuing a boy in Tanya village? Apparently, I misjudged. Probably because she was beautiful. I shouldn't have done that. This lack of immunity will strangle me later. Mr. Sierra turned a blind eye. I'm sure you know how bad it is to talk. I don't feel like my information has been gradually leaking lately here. Mother. What are you doing here? Right. All three of you will be hungry, so let's have dinner. When I was guided into the room, there was a large table long vertically. After a while, the first luxurious dishes I saw were brought in. Dinner was a treat. Hello. I'm Maria, Sierra's mother. Mr. Brown is sitting at the corner of the vertical table. It's Mr. Sierra's father. No, I didn't expect to see you this soon. Massa Moon, I heard your story from Sierra last night. I wanted to see you once. The father has already been recognized. Mr. Sierra apparently talked to Parapella last night. The door to the room opened and another woman showed up there. Oh, Hilda. Welcome home. Enough for today? I'm just... The guy looked at me. The you are. I'm interrupting. She was Mr. Sierra's sister. I didn't know you had a sister. Hilda. This is Massa Moon. You and To. Nice to meet you. My name is Hilda. My sister. Mr. Hilda starts talking about one thing in Tanya village when he gets to his seat. I no longer even know what the cover-up was. Thank you for helping Sierra. Mr. Hilda had the same silver hair as Mr. Sierra. This would be hereditary. Maria has silver hair, too. On the contrary. It looks like you helped Sierra today. Oh, you mean Kalane, huh? How do you know that? Lord Massa Moon, my sister is the same White King Knight as I am. Mr. Sierra, who examined me, told me. Apparently, this family doesn't care about me. Sisters, it's time to serve the country. I can't believe it's also the top White King Knight. It's a boulder. Mr. Hilda was humble. They taught swordsmanship when they were little and since then they've been walking the path of a sword. Mr. Hilda became a kingdom knight and was recognized for his arms, and by the time Mr. Hilda was elected White King Knight, 
Mr. Sierra was also a Kingdom Knight, and two years ago, Mr. Sierra was also named White King Knight, he said. I see. You two were geniuses. No, we are far from geniuses. If you say genius, you must be Reinhardt, said Mr. Hilda. Cause he's a real genius chosen as the White King Knight at only twelve. Compared to Lord Massamoon, the story changes, adds Sierra. Mr. Hilda looked at me at the top of his head. Do you know one thing about it in the square? No. There's no way a white king knight would know. Sister, do not look at Lord Massa Moon with such eyes. Be careful, Lord Massa Moon. My sister likes men who are snake-like women who never miss. I used to tell my own sister that much. Can we even say we're close? Just kidding. Just kidding. I played you my ideal sister, so I hope you gave me a little something. Lord Massa Moon can't. Because I am a customer. And there's no point in the corners or anything. And when the skin is peeled off. It doesn't make sense. I wish I was a guest. You're not even Sierra's boyfriend, are you? It's not a boyfriend or anything like that. I hope so. This is the time to ask him directly. Mr. Massamoon. What do you think of Sierra? Mr. Hilda looked at me nibbling for some reason. Mr. Sierra, on the other hand, is flustered with a bright red face. Mr. Hilda was secretly laughing as he watched how it went. Hey sister, say what? That's good. It's time to ask him. I'm asking you why you're talking about it. Shut up. Suddenly, Toe yelled. Toe had a glass of wine in her left hand. And there's one empty bottle in front of me. Toe, did you drink all of this? Excuse me, he says to Maria. It's okay, never mind. It's been a long time since I've seen Sierra like this. So we're having fun too. There's plenty of wine, so drink whatever you want. Mr. Brown brought me another bottle of wine. How generous. At this point, I'll tell Sierra. Massa Moon is my toe. Sit down because it's dangerous. Toe saw me. Dot okay. Somewhat honest. Toe sat in the chair. Dot toe. If you sit down, you can go straight to me. M. He's fallen asleep, apparently. Looks like Sierra's got a rival, sister. Don't be silly. It's time for me to go to bed. Good night, then. Mr. Hilda left the room intact. A free man. Just tease me. I'm sorry. No, I'm nothing. You're a fun guy. Mr. Hilda. You mustn't be fooled. That's your sister's operation. I'll keep that in mind for the liver. I'd rather put Toe to bed than that. Which way should I carry her? Oh, excuse me. I'll show you. I put Toe down to bed. Speaking of which, when you first met Lord Toe, why did Lord Toe only open his heart to Lord Massa Moon? I haven't even heard it yet. I wonder why. I'll ask you next time. Tell me then. Yes. I hung a blanket on Toe and left the room. Then they showed me to my bedroom. Lord Massa Moon, is that? Are you free tomorrow? Well, yes. I was thinking about going for a request, but what's wrong? No, I thought I'd teach you swordsmanship tomorrow. With that said, I made that promise in the carriage. Okay. Well. Thank you for tomorrow. Yes bright reply. Good night, then. That's what Mr. Sierra said and walked to his room. At that time, Mr. Sierra had an unprecedented look of joy. Mr. Sierra has that look on her face, too. What a surprise. It was Mr. Hilda who was there. What's wrong with you? By chance, it just came through. Is it true that you defeated Reed more than that? Dot well, will it turn out that way? For Toe? Dot what are you trying to say? I've heard a lot about it but I haven't even heard about your relationship. But if you look at it, you'll see. Toe thinks of you, you think of Toe. Nothing like that. Could you let Sierra in, too? In it, huh? It's the first time that kid's interested in men. Because all I ever had was a sword. You're the first person she's brought home to know. What childhood did Mr. Sierra have? So if you leave this country, I want Sierra to come with you. Sierra only knows swords. I was a knight in the kingdom. When I got my mind on it. Then it looks pathetic. You should know something other than the sword. I don't mind. What does Mr. Sierra say? You don't have to tell me now. Critical is fine. Now you enjoy your life in this country. That's what Mr. Hilda said. And he's gone somewhere. What are you thinking at all? I'm tired today. I went into bed and looked back at the day. Then he fell asleep as he was. The next day, when I woke up, there was Toe next door for some reason. Half-opened eyes gradually open. MMM. Good morning, Massa Moon. Morning. That's not good morning. Why are you in my bed? Because when I woke up, no one was there. I see. Yeah, yeah. Can't you? Toe looks at it. Dot number. Nothing. Not I can't say no to being stared at like that. Then why are you angry? No, 
You're not mad. Toe is a virgin killer named One Shirt. There is a sweater in the world that kills virgins. But a virgin can be killed with a thin shirt. Toe. Um, could you put some clothes on for now? No, it's hot. Lord Massamoon, the door opened. Good morning. I heard some talking. Sierra's voice. Good morning. Mr. Sierra I woke my body up while I slept back. Morning. Sierra toe as well. And, Mr. Sierra is shivering with a bright red face. Dot right? Lord Massamoon is also a man. Maybe it's something we have no choice about. But if you can weigh yourself down. Above all, this place. It's a misunderstanding. Toes on his own for this. Then you should let Sierra in. Too, toe said. Look, cause this side is empty. Well. That's not it. I don't know. I feel like Toe is getting weirder and weirder lately. Is it because the tension is coming apart? That's where Mr. Hilda said, Toe, are you there? And appeared. Looks like it was Mr. Hilda who taught Toe the room. Come to think of it, Toe shouldn't know. He also told Mr. Hilda to wake me up. What the hell does this guy want? I don't know. I mean, we were being played by this guy. This is how I woke up in the morning. I had Mr. Sierra put on an archery of swordsmanship. Time to take a break. Right. It's hard to try. I didn't think I could do it right away, but can you learn swordsmanship from me? Mr. Sierra just compliments him for being quick to remember. By the way, how long have you been learning the sword? I heard it was childhood. Is it about three years old? It was still a wooden toy at the time. Since when is Toe? I forgot. Maybe it was like Sierra. My father helped me get lost in the woods and I was about to be attacked by Liao Yulf. And then I started learning swords and magic. You got a lot going on. That's the only time I've ever felt scared. Is it Liao Yulf? Late Mr. Sierra creeps. What's wrong with you? Speaking of Leo Wolf. It's an S-rank monster. Has Lord Toe's father been defeated? Yeah, it's decorated with Lee Yulf peeling at that time. Toe is a demon. He's Toe's father, so strong. I don't think it seems strange to be able to defeat about S-rank. Does S-rank mean you're stronger than Nut Kalane? I can't believe I'm strong. It is a level where knights and adventurers from all over the kingdom can challenge and finally defeat in total. But there were individual differences in monsters. It's a different story but the same kind can be S rank or better depending on the level. In the end, you're levelistic. So if you had a level 500 mimic, how high would that rank be? Is it 500? I don't know what it is. By and large, that's fine, because I want Sierra's opinion. That's right. If there was such a level of monsters, that would be out of rank. Out of rank? What do you mean? The rank set by the Alliance is up to the basic SSS, triple S. There's an infinite class on top of that which means it's not real, it's not rank, it's unconfirmed. I mean, level 500 is unconfirmed, so you're going to be infinite. Yes, but it only means unconfirmed, so if a level 500 monster is confirmed, that would be out of rank. Infinity is like insurance, as defined by the Alliance. I see. In essence, do you mean the rank is only up to SSS, triple S? The auditorium then continued until the evening. I crossed Toe, who seemed bored and eventually I was supposed to learn the sword from the two of us. I opened my eyes gently. Clouds. Then white. Clouds see. One side round. All the clouds. Apparently this place is on a cloud. And check the area without knowing for sure. Is this? A temple? There was a building like that in front of me. From among the clouds the sun plunged in and lit up the temple. Long time no see. Massa moon. Suddenly, I heard a voice behind my back. Looking back. I'm confused by the identity of that voice. A, eh? Sean? That was Sean I was supposed to kill. Same tone. I'm afraid of snake stairs. Why are you here? You're me. Wait. Well, follow me. Come and you'll see. Block words. I followed. Inside the temple was less divine than the exterior. It was quiet and calm. It's the throne room, if you like. There, not even sitting on the throne, was a man standing. Well done, Massa Moon. Instead, I invited him. The man has short black hair. Who? You know Sean? Don't you know this? With that said, he flooded the man's body with red and black shadows, covering his entire body, wrapped in black armor. Kurid, Dauda, the voice. I immediately realized. Dungeons. That was the voice of the one who gave me the secret drug of vengeance. Right. You knew Sean. He's my comrade. First name, Sean. A man suddenly blocked. You don't have to say any more. With that said, you did. Sorry. The man was back in his original human form. I know what you're trying to say. This is nowhere for you. Well, 
It's a prison for us. I see. Prison is. That's a brilliant expression. Friends, said Sean. They were laughing with their bellies about what it was funny. Oh, bad, bad. That's what we talked about. Your body is on the bed properly. Now you're a mental body, so to speak. Don't worry about it. Mental body? Technically, it exists. But, well, that's good. Temporarily, but I called you here. Dot what do you mean? The secret medicine I gave you. That's the drug that connects me to my uses. Just give me a minute. I'm not sure it's too abrupt, but what did you do to me with that drug? After using the product, I felt any change that was made from a mixture of my blood. The effect is to give the user unique skills only once. Whatever comes out is random. The general skill, yes. Infinite if I tell you what I know. I mean, unconfirmed skills no one has ever seen. It is conditional on being unconfirmed. It's only rare. That's not necessarily why you get superior skills. You were lucky. I'm skilled enough to take you down to Sean. But if I wasn't lucky, I might have died in that dungeon. It wasn't weird being eaten as it was by that mimic. Well, I found out about the secret medicine. Thanks for your help. Thanks. Never mind. That's my whim. I just put it down experimentally. So, why did you call me? Sean explains. It's Massa Moon. I teach you my swordsmanship. What? It's all of a sudden. I don't know what that means. Not. What I want to hear is why you called me here. I can't tell you that from my mouth. Maybe why can't we talk? Said the man. Does that have anything to do with you not revealing your name? I can't say that either. It's the same if you ask Sean. Then I want you to tell me. Sean, what are you doing here? I can't tell you. Can't teach, not, can't tell. I mean, are these two tied to something? But why can't I even say that? I know what you're trying to say. I wasn't particularly interested. Was it more swordsmanship than that? You can tell me if you want to tell me. Teach my swordsmanship. The professor is momentary. But just like when your lord took in the secret medicine, pain occurs. Never mind. If you say you will, thank you. But swordsmanship right? How much time do you have? Then, Sean put his hand on my head. Hey! What is it? The next moment, the pain ran all over my body. Severe enough pain to clog your breath, and tremble. That was a moment, but it took a little while for the aftertaste to disappear. This is. I remember something in me about swordsmanship that wasn't supposed to have happened before. That's swordsmanship. Serpent class. Shire, Beast King class, Greyberg style swordsmanship, Imperial swordsmanship, Lint, Petrified Bird, Cockatrice, class. I had a lot of swordsmanship in me, Lint. What? Itself, swordsmanship. I checked a lot of swordsmanship in my head. Go around memory for a while, and then reach one sword technique. This is my swordsmanship. Mixed all my swordsmanship with my own to create one sword without gaps. Nameless genre? What's that? This swordsmanship has no name. There are only those who are slashed. Sean, for some reason, looked at me like he was staring far away. It feels like it was there when I realized it. Why did you give me this? I can't talk, said Sean. Think of me as a whim now said Vengeance God. But it's definitely what you're gonna need. Necessary? I guess so. In doing adventures. That's what you mean? Somehow I felt something like weight in the word need. Dot but the Vengeance God answers nothing. Can't you say that too? Find out for yourself if you want to know. If you keep traveling, you'll see. Can't you answer the key thing? By the way, Sean, I thought, if you're so strong, why did you lose to me then? With this swordsmanship, you could have won right? I haven't seen anyone in 150 years. And combat. Well, that can also be said to be the cause. But I wasn't caught off guard. In other words, the Lord was above at that moment. The magic your Lord showed you, that was magic I had never seen either. Sure, it's thin, but I also felt signs of a friend there. That's why I mistook him for a moment. But it wasn't from magic, it was from himself who took in the secret medicine. I mean, I couldn't see the magic. The point is, was your body dull? Massa Moon, go beyond. So I met a woman named Khalifa, and when I found her, I told her, I'm waiting on that hill. The next time Khalifa asks you a question, you just answer it's in the third drawer. And then I know, dot I don't know why. Is that what you need, too? Oh revenge God's eyes were serious in themselves. I just normally want to be adventurous. Well, I'll ask you when I stop by town. That doesn't matter. And one more thing. Learn magic. Learn magic. Anywhere. Enroll in school. Wizards as old as you study at a magic school. But I'm a healer. I don't mind. If you learn, 
you'll have more knowledge, and the scenery will change. The healer must have a destination you don't know about. It's like healing magic and support systems everywhere you can use them, but they'll be wider if you remember. There's no limit to magic. Okay that was a thankful word for me right now. You're rather honest. Nothing. I was interested in the school of witchcraft. I would have liked to go if I had the chance. Besides, you owe me a secret drug. Vengeance God laughed in relief. It's Massa Moon. That snake sword, but if it doesn't suit your lord, Give it to the devil's girl. You'll love it. Dot you mean foresight. I didn't tell you the toe was here. And so suddenly drowsiness struck me. Sounds like this far. Vengeance God groaned pot poorly. We can't call you over and over again. When will it be next? So one last favor. Distorted vision. Find us. One last word. My consciousness was broken. On the outskirts of Resorsen, Wangdu, the old town district. There was a woman with an umbrella walking into an old lonely building. When the old wooden door made a noise and the umbrella closed, I saw a thick purple fur coat and a hat larger than its shoulder width. I'm so obese I can tell from the top of my coat. Smell of perfume resistant to thick lipstick. It was the appearance that led her to be called Madam. This is, Madam Fran. Thank you for your time. The neighborhood's prominent eyesight and sprinkled cheeks. Jido bowed shallow to invite her by hand. Thank you for inviting me. Be the first to see you. Master Jido Sido. My name is Fran Bolfrin. White teeth peeking from red lips. Fran smiled gracefully. I don't mind Gido. And it's not the first time. I've been seeing you for a long time. Oh, me. I beg your pardon. Not at all. And this is Yun Yi. He's my assistant. Oh no, Yun. It's been a while, hasn't it? How have you been? No problem. Best regards. I'm still not fond of you, but I like it there. Excuse me. Yun has a slightly dark personality. But don't worry, I'm sure of my arm. I know. Yan has been excellent for a long time. Suddenly the conversation stopped and a strange time arose. Jido and Fran stare at each other with a smile. That look doesn't seem to be bleeding through each other, it's like a doll. And the conversation is suddenly reunited. Let's get down to business. I haven't had a few problems, but the beast you sent me was killed and rendered useless. I see, so how many people could you kill? I mean, that's the problem and I haven't been able to kill one of them. I see, so? The troublesome adventurer didn't get in the way, but when the White King Knight showed up, the beast was drooling. Drowsy. That's an unusual expression. Hey, so? The recovered fine beast has been reclaimed by Yun. So I want you to undo this beast again with your magic. I see, so? Dot that's all we're talking about isn't it? I see. I finally understand. Then take this. Fran said so and placed one large bottle with black liquid on the table. Oh, what is this? I know it's very rude, but at the time you called on Jido, I thought, well, let me know the general situation. This is a farewell from me. It will definitely help Jido. Jido glanced at the bottom and sides as he took the bottle. This is... Thank you kindly. Would you mind telling me what this is? It's a bunch of monsters. Fantastic. The moment he heard it, Jido opened his eyes and laughed niggily. Well, that's a really pleasant story. It's more than anything you like. Some of them are packed with more than B-rank monsters. I knew I needed it, so I borrowed some S-rank monsters. I see. What the hell are you talking about by the way? This has been pounded where it hurts. When I left the Empire, I borrowed some of the materials from the lab. Of course. Don't worry, this is just a few of those restored things. You won't find out. I see, I get it. If you find out, apologize from me. Yun placed the two glasses he had carried on the table and poured the wine. So when are you going to run it? Fran takes a sip of wine. Let's do it in a week. We want you to increase the number of beasts as much as possible. By then, I get it. See you in a week. Speaking of which, Fran rose from the chair, refreshed and reared the room without a fortist. The smell of perfume is on my nose, washing it with water. You'll have trouble telling me you don't like it. Tell him in person. Yun stares at the bottle of I don't think I need that table. Are you going to attack me with a monster? It's insurance. It's no match for an example adventurer to intervene again. And Madame Fran was a woman of good sense. It's very different from you, Yun Yi. She immediately understood. That's all we need to be vigilant about. I'm tired of hearing about your stupidity. I just do my job. It's forbidden to go deep. This is an order, just keep track of what you're doing. Dot okay. Yun said so and left the room unfathomably. Oh, man, 
she's in trouble. Jido laughed happily as he watched the black bottle of the table with the wine in one hand. Find me. Is this what it means to be like a dream on a spring night? Leaving an indelible emotion behind, Sean and the revenge god disappeared from before me. Massa Moon, what did you just say? I didn't say anything. Sierra led us to a Wallstein store. Toe looks strange staring at my face with a pair of Yao Arstein spare ribs in one hand that seemed to be female meat. Across the street was Mr. Sierra eating meat with a lively look, watching the two of us like that. Lord Massa Moon. Was swordsmanship really better this morning? I'm fine today. Just like yesterday this morning, Mr. Sierra was due to see the sword. But I couldn't stop waking up from last night's dream, and the words of two of my friends repeated like denighters were depressing, not the other way around. Mr. Sierra was waving his sword in the garden because it was routine, but I was just watching the mock fight between the two of them. I just realized then that there was both the swordsmanship of the White King Knight under the direct command of the King and the swordsmanship of the Box Demon seemed as if it were a child's play, and were all captured in slow motion. But if you think about it, it would be a natural story. I was taught everything about that sword by a swordsman who would have lived at least 150 years. I don't know how long to the demon nation lives, but Mr. Sierra, a human being, should be only a few years old after learning the sword. You can't be indeterminate. What would Mr. Sierra think if he exchanged his sword with me in this state? The numerous swordsmanship Sean had learned during his long journey felt as if it were a memory. Are you not feeling well somewhere? Oh, how are you? Yes, you don't look very pale. Massa Moon, really? It's not bad to be worried about two beautiful women. But I feel guilty about wasting my worries. Let's not delay our thoughts around here either. Your health is always the same. I wanted to see more of town today than swordsmanship. Was it? I was just wondering if I really hated archery. Architecture can grow and it's fun. But you never held a sword this morning, did you? I just wasn't in the mood for that somehow. If I held the sword, nature and my body would have moved. I'm not there until yesterday, I'm the one holding the sword with no clearance. Two distracted faces come to my attention, probably got questioned afterwards. Sierra, what is that? Suddenly, Toe pointed across the glass window. When you leave the store and cross the boulevard, across the street you can see the dark details leading to the back road sandwiched by the building. There was a fat man there who looked bad. Something seems to be grabbing the arms of a white-haired girl who resists and trying to force her to take her somewhere. So, furthermore, I realized that there was something unfamiliar about the girl's head. That's probably a slave trader. But the trade in slaves is forbidden in Razorson. And of course, it's crowded. That girl has white ears on her head. The girl's back length is small and she still seems young. When I realized, the girl had disappeared from the alley. I don't even look like a man. I'm an animal man. Is Lord Massa Moon the first to see the Beast Clan? As, well, really? Let's just go after it. Someone else may have been caught. After rushing to finish accounting, the three of us followed the girl and the man to the dark alley. Keep this guy in the barn. The white cats, they sell high. The frightened white cat girl had been brought to some warehouse that smelled dim and dusty. I understand. I hear a voice like a tooth loss and the girl is turned over to another man. The baking mark is done. Don't scratch me. The fat man left the warehouse behind, distorting his expression to a full odor. Hey, little one, follow me. When the toothless man spoke cold, the girl continued later without resisting. Its footsteps are frightening, its gaze constantly uncertain and its horizons narrow. I couldn't escape my fear and I was walking round my back. Get in here and keep quiet. If you make a scene, I'll cut your ears off with this one. A girl nodding with a frightened look as she alternates between her figure in a knife and the man's ruthless eyes. Her eyes were red and swollen and wet with tears. A while after the man left, the girl was crying as one shrunk in the cage. Gugu, -gu, sister, gush, guys. Two men appear there. They are men with an ugly grin unlike the other men. Hey Kevin. We got the white cats in today. Oh, really? Because there was a whore in there yesterday. It's better today than that. You don't. Hey, Kevin. The boss is out now. This guy, why don't we play with him? That's good. I was just getting stressed out lately. Just fine. If I have to hurt you, I won't find out. The man unlocked the cage and gently opened the door, keeping an abominable look on his face. The girl peered from outside the cage, staring at its evil side with moistened eyes. Mom. Be quiet. Just sit still and you'll be fine. Come on in a minute, sister. Girl who leaks not many words of fear. Oh, 
Did I say something? Hey, come on, get him out. What if that fat guy comes? Okay, okay, don't be in such a hurry. Dirty hands were about to approach the girl. That's when, suddenly, I think a shadow appeared behind the men, and they said, Ugh. He leaked his voice and fell to the ground as it was. I wonder if it's okay to keep these guys alive. I heard voices that must belong to men, but the area is dim and my face doesn't look good. Looking down at the two people who were unconscious, not even Pickley, he seemed worried about how they should be handled. Well, should I leave this kind of thing to Mr. Sierra? I'm a white king knight. Crossing the sleeping men, and crouching. He peeks softly into the cage. Are you all right? He laughed bitterly as he deluded, polypolizing his head at the frightened girl's appearance. Well, I just found you in the street, and I came to help. Dot. Come on, let's get out of here. Smiling, he reaches out to the girl. The girl slowly reached out that little hand, even as she hesitated. Even the beast man has the same hands as man. The skin is white and clear. When the girl's hand overlapped with his palm, the girl's tremor stopped. Don't worry, I won't hurt you. I'll take you home. White hair like snow, and two white cat tears. Weaving dull cluttered robes, the girl looked up at the face of the political sect. Your brother. Who is he? It's a political sect. And you? Namiznam. The girl's ears are like bright white snow and her hair is bright white. Everything was snowy and mysterious. Nam. Bye, Nam. Let's get out of here before anyone gets here. Yes. It is. When I held my hand, Nam shook it back gently. The hand is shaking slightly. I guess I'm still scared. I headed out to the exit without any particular conversation and went out of the warehouse with the frightened Nam. The sun that suddenly came into view is dazzling. So I found To and Mr. Sierra waiting. Lord Massamoon. Has anyone come out? There's a guy I saw on the street earlier, but that's right. In the direction Mr. Sierra pointed to, there was To's figure, waving at this one. Beside such a toe was the figure of a little fat man who was nodding and losing consciousness to the warehouse walls. It's the man who took Nam away. You're from the beast clan who was taken away by that man earlier. She's Nam. Introducing her, Mr. Sierra looked seriously at Nam and nodded I see as she was immediately convinced. Nice to meet you, Lord Nam. My name is Sierra, but white tail on those white ears. Isn't Lord Nam the white cat? Yes. It is. You're nervous about Mr. Sierra because of the first meeting, and Nim was grabbing my robe hem lightly for some reason. Excuse me, where does Lord Nim live? Dot time at sisters. I see. Were you still a child of the church? At the end of the interrogation, Mr. Sierra rises. What is that church? He left the watch once, and Toe joined him. I'm talking about the orphanage. I'm temporarily protecting a child, but apparently Lord Nim is a child of the church. They say there's an orphanage church in a painting downtown. We took Nam and headed the first. Sister. Sister. When he arrived at the orphanage, Nam opened the front door and hurried inside. I looked at him unexpectedly and the three of us continued to Nam. Once inside, it was a quiet front door with no reception. I see a large staircase in the front. When it came to church, I knew exactly what the church looked like but it was like an old mansion. Nam. One woman appears there. A woman in white and navy monastic clothes. Sister. Nam rushed over to the woman and hugged her. Where have you been so far? I was worried. I'm sorry. I was caught by scared people. Then Masamoon helped me. I'm thrilled you remembered your name. The confused sister, not knowing what was going on, briefly met him and led him to a room like the talking room first. Thank you for helping us where we are in danger. When I got to my seat, Mr. Sierra explained the situation to Sister Number. We can send it to you safely, more importantly, sometimes Num doesn't say he's coming to his friends. The king's capital is peaceful, and I don't see many discriminating beasts. Plus the slave trade is banned, so I thought you'd be fine, but I didn't expect that to happen. Apparently, Num has a wandering habit. But they always came back safe, and Sister stopped caring one of these days. While we were talking, Nim was hanging out with the other kids. You said you should have felt scared, but you look fine already. What an accomplished young girl. With that in mind, that's when I was watching smiling Nim. I found something strange in Nim's arm. That's. Excuse me, sister. What is that on Nim's left arm? It was a pattern of something elephant in circles. It's around the left arm and looks like a tattoo. No way, those are slave prints. Dot. Sister was surprised as if she had lost her words and she wept thinly. According to Mr. Sierra's story, 
That's called a slave print. It is a baking mark engraved by pressing hot metal. Sister, who saw it, ran over to Nim, who was playing, and hugged him in tears. But Nim himself had a look like nothing, and he was confused by sister's condition. Apparently, some slave traders do not make themselves burn marks. The baking mark, so to speak, is a chain that binds the spirit and what is marked stops them from fleeing. Slave prints are often used overwhelmingly by men, and fewer women seem to be. Mr. Sierra said with a heavy look that in Nim's case it must have been given on the grounds of the Beast Clan. After all, you should have killed no one left. Anger and willingness to kill crept up from the bottom of my heart. I regretted making a man-made choice that I should leave it to the White King Knight. Massa Moon, are you okay? Toe peered into my face. Huh. It's kind of dark on your face isn't it? Lord Massa Moon, you'll be fine. We'll take care of it later. I've already contacted Annette, and it's not like Lord Massa Moon would be bothered. I'll take care of the rest. It's okay, Mr. Sierra said again, as she showed me how I was doing. Then I broke up with Mr. Sierra in front of the orphanage because there was a clean-up. We say goodbye to Sister and Nam, too. Then we'll excuse ourselves for this, too. Nam. Be careful for the time being, okay? Are you leaving already? Nim's expression is somewhere sad. Yeah, but I'll be back to see you. You can't get out on your own anymore. I get it. See you tomorrow. We bow gently to sister and look at Nim's face while we follow the orphanage. Are you still going tomorrow? I don't know. But Nim said, I'll see you tomorrow, right? You said it. But tomorrow, you'll forget about me. I wasn't thinking deeply about the words Nim muttered at this time. But the next day, as always, I woke up at the Eclato Mansion, and I would know what Nim meant by that word. Good morning, Master Massamoon. Master Massamoon is seeing you this morning. How are you doing? What, are you a guest to me? Yes, we'll be waiting for you there. The next morning, I woke up, and even though I put my hand on the doorknob to enter the living room upstairs, the maid caught me off guard and led me to the waiting room for the guest. Awake with no clear vision. Your husband. Your husband? When I opened the door, I heard a voice and someone jumped at me. Looking at his feet, there was Nam. I saw the snowy white hair, ears, and tail and knew immediately, Nam, what's going on early this morning? And he said, your husband. My mother taught me, if you save my life, I want you to love that Jim for life. Your husband helped Nam. Your husband is Nam's husband. I didn't understand the explanation and heard what the child was saying. Better than that, it looks like I'm letting you call me. I can't believe you're my husband. It would be tough if Sierra or Toe saw me. We need to do something. Morning, Massa Moon. Good morning, Lord Massa Moon. Did you wake up earlier? You're early this morning. But there was a good time, and Toe and Mr. Sierra showed up. Perfect timing. Master, where are you going today? Nam wants to follow your husband. Your husband? And the two of them join their voices. They have a rounded and inexplicable look at each other. But the next thing I saw was a strange eye of contempt. Hey. Wait a minute. I'm not. There's a reason for this. Is your husband still an adventurer? So are you going to the guild today? Nam, keep your mouth shut for a second now. Even though he tried to explain to both of us to clear his suspicions, Nam called me your husband many times so as to discourage my excuses, and he would turn me into a pervert. After finishing his breakfast, he left the Eclato mansion some time later. We live here but we don't pay for accommodation or food because of Sierra's generosity. But it's time to take a request and make some money. I do not know when I will be leaving this country. You thought I was letting you call me? There's no way. I don't know what you think I am, but they thought I was forcing Nim to call me your husband and other bad tastes until I denied it. By the time the suspicions cleared up, the four of us had arrived in front of the Alliance. Oh, it's Nim. Ah, I have Sharon. That's where I ran into Mr. Sharon who was opening the store. Did you know Nim? I'm Nim's husband. Your husband? What to slay? Again. Mr. Sharon turned his contemptuous gaze to me. Oh, man, do I have to explain it again? But this time, Mr. Sierra explained it to me on my behalf. Thanks to this, the suspicion cleared up immediately. I see. I thought so. There is more to whiteness. I often lie like that plainly. I don't think there was a lie in that contempt look. Mr. Sharon says he had noticed lightly because Nim seems to come to the store a lot, and he knows more about Nim than anyone. Was it Mr. Sharon whose sister was talking about Nim's friend? Nam, what's wrong with that arm? So Mr. Sharon noticed Nim's arm burn marks. I see. Did that happen? Totally terrible thing to do. If you were here, 
I'd beat you up. Sharon had a harsh look on Sierra's account and expressed sadness and anger. You saved my life, and I'll thank you. Nim is like a daughter to me, Miss Sharon said, unable to hide her anger at the slave trader. But I didn't expect the day to send my daughter out so soon. Upon understanding the details, Mr. Sharon looked at my face with a nigger, unintelligible grin. I'll protect you, you're Nim's chosen master. Don't let me down. Okay, I don't know why. What is this man saying? You don't understand what Nim means by that, do you? Does that make sense? Oh, what do you mean? Well, you don't have to know now. You'll see. But that's all I'm telling you, right? If you do anything to make Nim sad, I won't forgive you. Like stabbing a nail, Mr. Sharon put his index finger up in front of his face for some reason. Sierra. I've been looking for you. A strange man appeared there. I can see a white silk hat on my dandy nose moustache and my left eye monocular. A man with feathers and a distinguished white coat on his long body. Edward, you're also in front of the public like that. You're still nervous. It's no big deal. Nobody thinks I'm a white king knight, etc. For me this is everyday wear and it's the usual thing. More than that, Sierra. I've kept this from Reinhardt, a man who gives Mr. Sierra a piece of paper rounded with strings without explanation. Oh, if these people, Lord Massamoon and Lord Toe, and this is Lord Nam. There was no introduction to Mr. Sharon, but the man was secretly meeting. Apparently, we know each other. You're the rumor. Excuse me, my name is Edward Scotch. Sorry for the delay in greeting you. By the way, Edward, what is this document? Mr. Sierra opened the paper he was given and asked. Except inside, it's a requisition, doesn't it say so? Behold, this is the king's? I don't know. Apparently, a basilisk appeared at the week. It is also Lord Boreas Barn, which his majesty's friend can reveal. What's basilisk? I doubted that, too, but apparently Toe doesn't know either. Nim knows. It's about the big snake. A big snake? The boulder is Lord Nim. You're an expert. Yes, basilisk means serpent or serpent. The king says you should go. What do you mean? Why to me? I don't know. I was just ordered to give it to you. That's just great. Sierra, get rid of the basilisk. Until Sharon. Why not? You were just cutting off your big fangs with your basilisk tear glands and poison bags. It would be helpful if you picked them up as they were exorcised. You're not very ridden, Mr. Sierra with a troubled expression. Mr. Sierra, I'll follow you, too. Toes good, too right? Yeah. I don't mind if Massa Moon goes. I'm sorry, both of you. Never mind. I'm free anyway, and it's time for us to repay Mr. Sierra. If you're going, don't take Nim with you. Do you have a Nim? No, you can't. There's a serpent, isn't there? I can't believe I'm taking you. Nim's still small. Extremely dangerous. I don't know what kind of monster the basilisk is, but the target is a snake. I'm just sorry if the poison invaded you, master. Are you leaving them? Nam wants to help your husband. I don't care if they say so. You're going to exorcise the monster, right? I would be able to cure anything with healing magic as soon as possible. But it's simply insane to take such a small child to a request. Even if it can be cured, it doesn't change that it's dangerous. Don't take him. Don't worry about it. Nim looks like this, and he's stronger than you in the healer. Nim strong? Are you sure? It's a famous story here. Don't take him because you think he's fooled you. Where in the hell does such confidence overflow? As is close to this certainty. If you were strong, you wouldn't have been caught by a slave trader. You have no choice, I get it. But only this time. I couldn't say no to that look, and I probably took it on. At all, the king has also made the people rough. If it's about basilisk, even the alliance adventurers should be able to defeat it enough. And Edward is Edward. Too. If you're going through the guild, don't you have to bother asking me. On the way to Merchant Town Week, Mr. Sierra, in a bad mood, was spilling his stupidity in the carriage. The unpaved road can't be flat, and the modern man can move his carriage to me. Mainly terrible damage to the butt. This would still be better if we went with divine speed. But I've been hearing Mr. Sierra's stupidity for a while now that he'll get used to it. Hey. What can Nim do? Can you use magic? Mr. Sharon said that Nim seems strong, but does Toe care too? I don't know magic, but cat fists can be used. Once upon a time, they taught me. You're not used to being with us yet, Nim. I was a little nervous. What is that cat fist? Martial arts or something? Doesn't your husband know cat fists? Oh, 
I've never heard that before. Then Nim explains. Then Nim suddenly stood up in the carriage with a rough look on his face. What is cat fist? Me and Toa were like, what's a cat fist? He asked at the same time, dot I don't even know Nim very well. Nim sits adultly as if he's soaked up for some reason. I don't know why, but I didn't dare put a scratch in it. But I know it's one of those veterinary techniques that's passed down to the cats. You know enough, the atmosphere suddenly crept so I was distracted strangely. I see, is that a kind of veterinary technique? Mr. Sierra, who should have been stupid there, came into the conversation. Veterinary arts are martial arts that the beasts specialize in. It varies from species to species among the beasts, and they called it the cat fist in Lord Nim's hometown. You mean cat fisting is a school of names? But you can't use magic, can you? I can't use it, but Nim is a cat wizard, so if you study, you should be able to use it. Is it a cat wizard? Sierra is obviously surprised. What's a cat wizard? Apparently Toe doesn't know. Of course I have no idea. A cat wizard is a profession that is specific to the cat family. I've read in the book that it's innate, and it seems to be high-end. Innate? Wait a minute. So some professions aren't innate? Of course there is. Occupations may be leveled as each grows. I used to be a knight, but now I'm a senior knight. So there's a chance that a healer, for example, could be a priest? Is it priest? That's impossible. Priest itself does not mean that it is rare, because that is also an innate occupation. Besides, the derived destinations of each profession are roughly elucidated. To my knowledge, there is no derivative destination for healers. Dot really? That's unfortunate. Will the healer remain the weakest? of the healer for the rest of his life? Is your husband a healer? Oh, that's why I can only use the magic of support systems, like healing wounds. Really? Now Nim won't call me your husband either. Master, I want you to feel safe. Your husband is protected by Nim. Besides, your husband helped Nim, so he can't be weak. Nim was innocent. Then, Master, when are you going to get to town? Mr. Sierra, how much longer? I'm sure we'll arrive tomorrow but we're going to be spending the night in the wild or in the carriage today. It's gonna cost you a fortune. The week is a little far away, so I can't help it. By the way, it came out intact, was it good? At least we can't go back to King's Landing today, can we? If you leave it to Edward, you'll be fine. And just in case, I contacted Annette. When? Is that also magic? Speaking of which, I got a ring that I could read from the common name of the dragon's heart, Leah. But does Mr. Sierra have something similar to that? Do you have a ring or something that you could possibly read about? Actually, I have one, too. I took out the ring Siak gave me and showed it to him. Of course I have it. The White King Knight is required to possess it. Apparently, the conversation on the ring is mainstream. Convenient, isn't it? I can't believe we can have a conversation no matter how far away we are. But it's normal for me to be a modern man, and I'm not so surprised. No matter how far away you are, are you? Mine. You can only use this in the kingdom, right? Lord Massamoons. Is that even possible outside the country? That's what the guy who gave me this said. Because that's pretty expensive. Wouldn't a pure ore or something be used? Otherwise, we can't talk that far. Is it a luxury item? How much would it cost to sell it? Who gave me that ring? Massamoons' friend. We're not friends. Sometimes I knew him, and all of a sudden he attacked me and asked me back. What? Attacked? What do you mean? It means the way it is. I was exploring a place like a dark maze, and when I realized, I was in the meadows, and then there were those guys behind me. At that point, I was exorcising hostility, but when I managed to reconcile and leave the scene, all of a sudden I was thrown on fire. Something's terrible. So you're paying me back? Oh. Then he gave me this ring because he didn't even ask me how the organization was, and he explained it, and he solicited me and the reply didn't have to be now, something's frigid. Taking it in his hand, Toe had a cursory, suspicious look at the ring. But the ring will probably be real. I don't know, but I feel strange. I'm just not convinced. Didn't you hear the name of the organization? I heard you say it was the heart of a dragon. As soon as I said that, their faces changed at the same time. Mr. Sierra, in particular, is eye-opening and stunned. Become. Did you say the heart of a dragon? Yes. You know what? Nothing you know or probably don't. Is it a little famous organization? Instead of fame, in many countries they have been nominated. And it costs a lot of money. No way. Are you a criminal? What they're doing is killing politicians, 
so to speak. Is it like the murder of someone in power who commits embezzlement or murder? With that said, he said something similar. What about corruption and the annihilation of corruption? What about state theft? I see, you're certainly right. Whether they are kings or sinners, they will surely kill. That's what you could call state theft. The queen of the kingdom of Toyland was murdered by them and so forth would be a particularly famous story. The kingdom of Toilets? Don't you know? King Prypha, who once ruled that country, committed a mass slaughter saying that his country should be filled only with cute things. And more than half of the people were killed. I hear the older ones were almost killed. So, did King Prypha get killed by the dragon's heart? Yes. But the king wasn't the only one killed. They are said to have murdered not only the king, but all his associates. Some of them had kids. I didn't know those guys were like killing even kids. People don't stop by to see them. You knew to, too? I don't know as much as Ciara. It's just that I've heard my father talk to my mother before about a guy he knew called Carpent who started an organization with that name. Carpent or something? What's that? I don't know him very well either. What does Lord Massamoon intend to do about the invitation? Dot I don't know yet. I don't know when this is going to happen, and honestly, I think it's either way right now. If we don't see each other again like this, it's no use thinking. Just forget about selling the ring. Really? But instead of encountering them who can't even grab a foothold now, I didn't know they were even solicited. Is it called a boulder? No, it's a boulder. They weren't such big guys, though. Besides, I can't believe I met them. After all, it's only occasional. Speaking of which, he did say he was going to Greyberg, but how would those guys be doing by now? No way, are you going to lose that country? When I thought that, I remembered the faces of Fu and Sub and a bunch of people. This is a post located near the border of the Kingdom of Greyberg. The neighborhood is a meadow area as far as you can see and it will be the first gateway for visitors to Greyberg. The territory of Greyberg is vast, and the castle towns and royal castles surrounded by fences can be described as symbols of this country. There are also a number of small villages dotted in the vast territory all of which are the property of Greyberg. You need to be examined near the border to enter the territory, and to enter the castle town you have to go through these two posts. The examination in front of the main entrance. The first barrier is located at a distance from the barrier and a number are installed to enclose the barrier. It will no longer be possible for anyone to see us and enter this country. But there were three figures of the dragon's heart, Sieg, Alfred, and Eliza. A few days after they broke up with the political sect, the three had made it through the meadow zone to Greyberg. Each one wears a hood provided for his robe and hides his face, but that doesn't mean they came to visit the country. The one there. Stop. Before the three men showed up, the two officials at the precinct were spearing and vigilant. He stops as ordered and approaches in awe as he watches the three who are silent. Eliza, do it. Siag's voice was heard and Eliza put her hands on the officials. Shortly after, the two officials lost their minds and fell on the spot. Like you said, it doesn't seem like a problem. This place is basically thin among a few places of detention. I don't see any bad guys bothering to break in from a nice spot. Only about merchants and travelers go by. And it's just the two of us. Too few. Probably a demon opponent and full of hands. I can't turn people around this way. Maybe they're less secure than they were when I was there. The three of them were uncomfortable with being too easy while passing through the lockup without difficulty. Wait, someone's coming. So two legs stopped in Siag's voice. I heard a horse squeal from somewhere. An old man appeared there with three soldiers. The three soldiers in armor descend the horse. When they stop in front of him, each had a straight sword in his hand staring at the Zeeks in front of him, and stood up, ho ho ho, good, you will not be dealt with by the Lord, I'll do it, stay back, long stretching white beard and hair, a brown robe big enough to cover your entire body and hide it to your feet, as the soldiers paved the way, the old man descended from the horse slowly moved forward, ho ho ho, this is, long time no see. Master Alfred, the old man lowered his head slowly, you don't seem to have fallen in love again, Grandpa, your majesty is saddened that you are living with these people. Are you sad? It's as shady and humid as ever. I have nothing more to say to you, it's no use talking. In that way, I guess I'm not going to be back. Ho 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 ho. So, what brings you here this time? I'll see you first. My name is Zeke. Getting out in front of the two, Siag faced the old man and carefully named him. Dot conjecture follows. So Siag and I, 
What did the lords do here? This is not a country that has nothing to do with people like you. That depends on the answer to the question. I have information that the kingdom of Greyburg has summoned brave men, asking for direct access. That's magic that's designated forbidden by costing a ton of lives. Whatever the reason, it's not a good thing to go. I see. I mean, isn't that what your lord wants to hear? I wonder what the truth is, whether or not a valiant summons has been made. I'm not going to talk extra. Stop prolonging it with useless words. Ho 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 ho, even if you're not in such a hurry, the answer won't run away. Wow, young man. Lord, aren't you in a bit of a hurry? Siag was calm in that provocative tone. One eyebrow doesn't move. There is no sin on the summoned. Except those who exercised it. That magic will always trigger war if you use it. Traces of magic created by a brave summons are not so easy to erase. If this information is true, it's only a matter of time before it leaks outside. We'll take care of it before there's a war. If it is true, there are many people involved. They'll die. Ho ho ho. Let me get this straight. With an unchanging grin and an exemplary loving laugh, the old man took out a brown wand about his own back length from his nostrils. Whether there has been a valiant summons or not, be sure of it with your lords. All those who resist are slain. Albert Morrow, you will die here. Ho ho ho. I'm not a little fucking kid. You knew me from the edge. Earlier laughter suddenly disappeared, and there was a little old man with his eyes sitting still and letting go of his killing spirit. But Zeke did not change his expression and pulled out the machete with a calm face. Be careful, Siag. Grandpa is a wise man even when he looks like this. I don't intend to add or subtract from the Archmage, who was dubbed the Wizard of the Forest. I'll do it. You two stay back. I didn't think the Dragon's Heart was a gathering of fools. The three of us could win, right? No matter, I'm going to win. Ho ho ho. Still young. The power of residual dragons. Hot air appears from Siag's body and starts to see things like flashing red lightning. I took this place on. Go back to your country and report this to the princess. Okay, but. Go good. Your lords are out of the way. When Albert orders the soldiers to retreat, he makes a white magic formation appear at his feet. He turned a sharp gaze to the siege in front of him which created a shitty atmosphere. The energy produced by both sides collided, creating a tremendous gust of wind in the meadows. Siag still sets up a machete with a sober look. Albert put up his cane, and smiled. So this Albert Morrow. Long time no see. Cutting Albert's voice like a joke, a shock wave from a single hit echoed the meadow. Albert had lost both hands and feet and had fallen into a desolate land. It changed from an open prairie surrounded by great trees. Thick routes are popping out of the raised ground, and it's no longer the meadows, it's the woods. Go ho 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 I didn't know I was going to lose this. There is a lot of blood scattered around the trees. Occasionally, it is carried by a gentle breeze that appears through the trees, with a scent of raw, smelly iron. Lord, you're not human. Are you the dragon clan? When I was younger, I remember seeing it only once. I don't have an in-laws to answer. Siag looked down at Albert with the same look as he did while delivering a machete to his sheath. Ho ho ho. Why don't you tell your dying grandfather? We can't afford it at all. The body damage was severe and Albert's expression was cool when he said he was already bleeding heavily. Ask again. Did you, Greyberg, perform a brave summons? You already know. Smoke doesn't stand where there's no fire. Be sure. With those young eyes. Eliza turned away from Albert for the answer. It's frightening. Then there is no evidence. Perhaps even your lords can't find it. It wasn't a month ago that I summoned the brave. We can't possibly do anything. No more traces of magic. That's irrelevant. Dot what? You just admitted that there was a summons in that mouth. That's enough for us. Is that what you deserve to call justice? No, I'm not saying number. Young young. Your lord is too young. I'm in too much of a hurry. I can't afford it. I know you're going to do it justice, but your lords, it's a massacre. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just murder. You think it's justice? Siag, let's go before reinforcements arrive. Eliza was increasing her guard around. We don't do justice. This is not a question of good or evil. All we have is whether we can believe it or not. The three pass beside Albert, who would soon be out of breath. Dear Alfred, is this your wish? Don't you feel anything when you look at me? Where the hell did that sweet Alfred go? Are you, Grandpa, 
It's no use appealing to love. I don't have any feelings for you guys. Nothing. I don't resent Johannes or Alice anymore. I'm just scared right now. I didn't think you guys were so stupid. I never got tired of just a reckless war with the demons, and I didn't know I'd even get my hands on a brave summons. This country is over. The country will never die uninhabited. If it is alleged to be the end, that will be nothing but the destruction of Master Alfred. And if you're going to make a fool of Greyberg, you're going to have to be stupid to be human, because this is just a choice to live. Ho ho ho, Master Alfred is young too. I'm gonna die thinking that. Maybe you're happy. You're too old. That way forever, deceive yourself with that deluded laugh. I'm done talking. Screw you. Ho ho ho. Screw the dying old man. There is no longer a prince. To cheerful laughter. Alfred, of course never looked back on them again. Albert stares at the gradually sumptuous sky with his body motionless and on his back. He was smiling until the end of his eyelid fell. Your husband. There are many shops. That's a lot of people. It's about the town of merchants. Wouldn't that be less today? That's not much. I can't help but be surprised at Toe. Week was overflowing with people far more than the central square of Wangdu. Toe is blinded by the number of people she goes out with and Nam shines her eyes on accessories lined up in nearby outdoor stores. Isn't this the first time Mr. Sierra looked calm? In the meantime, let's head to Wheat Crunch. So was the request, but I was fed up with the amount of people. The clients waiting Wee Crunch was on a small, high hill visible ahead of him through town. Inside the ranch surrounded by fences there was a figure of a creature like bison and a cow everywhere, divided by two, and Toe, who found out it was Wallstein knew who the food he had been talking about, and was just a little shocked. Excuse me, can someone please? I arrived at my first residence after entering the ranch. Mr. Sierra takes the initiative to visit, but apparently he's away. I didn't even hear footsteps when I called, and there were no signs of people. No one seems to be here. Apparently they're out. It gets stuck. My planned shopping will slip in after this. I want to do the request by the end of the day if I can and I just want to go shopping. I'm not going to stay in this town for long, especially, and I just want to go home when I'm done. I haven't seen the town yet, but honestly, there are just a lot of people and do stores here that kill the landscape. Master, people are gathering. That's where Nim found something. There's a big bun in the direction of Nim's fingers, and you can see a crowd nearby. Basilisk is talking about living in a barn, but is that it? I can't wait to be scared every day anymore. The first thing I heard when I reached the barn was a voice similar to the anger. Apparently, the gathered townspeople were blaming one grandfather, and there was pressing air flowing there. If you can't do something about that, I'm done here. Clean, why don't you give up this land already? Cause I'm telling you you're gonna get rid of me. Mr. Boreas, you're old, too. Why don't we just let this ranch go and hide? Boreas Week. Surely that's the client's name. If that old man at the heart of this commotion is Boreas Week, why are the townspeople blaming Mr. Boreas? But I knew why from the side I thought so. Probably due to the basilisk of living inside this barn. Gentlemen, could you just wait a little longer? I made a request to the Adventurers Guild in Wangdu. Adventurers are supposed to come today as well. I'm sure you'll get rid of the basilisk soon. I heard that yesterday too. So how long do we have to wait today? Mr. Boreas had bowed his head over and over again. By tomorrow, he said. Mr. Sierra, who was seen there, breaks into the crowd. What an aggressive man. The townspeople were staring at Mr. Sierra as he drew people apart. Excuse me. Do you have Lord Boreas Week here? The townspeople's attention missed Mr. Sierra's shout and the noise stopped. I'm Boreas, but you? I'm late for my application. My name is Sierra. I came from Wangdu to eliminate the basilisk. The look on Mr. Boreas's face, which was somewhere gloomy in the words, changed. Are you an adventurer? That's good. Guys, listen up. The adventurer came from the Alliance. Now you can rest assured. The gathered townspeople leave spitting and throwing up. I hope so, etc. What a cold bunch of people to say they're from the same town. In the meantime, I found a man secretly staring at us with one tongue. When the man noticed my gaze, he deviated to delude that dirty eye that was directed at Mr. Sierra, and went down the hill with the townspeople. It stinks. Nim suddenly said that. He expresses disgust with his expression and pinches his nose. Smells? What do you mean? There's a mixture of smells. Mixed smells? Dot. What is it about? Nim moves his nose pimply as he says it smells, 
and looks like he's looking for the source of the smell. Thank you, gentlemen. Please rush to the right place. No, please. So it's Basilisk, you know. When is it going to end? Lord Massamoon. When can you start eliminating Basilisks? Mr. Sierra probably won't call me Naito anymore. I just have to give up. Besides the existence of magic such as a brave summons, there would be others in this world with names similar to those of the Japanese, and they didn't need to care that much from the beginning. As far as I'm concerned, I hope the subs don't even find out. That's all. I'd like to get it done by the end of the day, if possible, because I want to look around town. Let's get right to it. Whoa, wait. Basilisk is an A-rank monster, like opening a barn all of a sudden. Shouldn't it be better to investigate first? With that said, Mr. Sierra had explained that the client was a former adventurer. Well, in these cases, it usually seems common sense to do an investigation and then work on it. It's okay for this time only. Rest assured, Lord Massamoon is here. This man relies too much on me when he says it's a request left to Mr. Sierra. Plus, there's a noticeable habit of telling my information all the time. Can you show me the example barn for now? Of course I don't mind that. Then Mr. Boreas took the key out of his trouser pocket. Coming in front of the barn, we were looking at that big wooden building. Apparently Basilisk liked this place enough to put it to bed. Is there a Basilisk in this? Yes, I think he's asleep now. I knew it was. Nim said he hasn't even unlocked the barn yet but the he goes again saying something. It stinks. It smells the same as before. What stinks so much from earlier? It's a basilisk. I knew that was this smell. There's no doubt about this smell from the loud people all the time. Basilisk smell. I have no idea. You mean the townspeople just now? Nim nodded cocklessly. So, do you know who exactly you felt it from? He's fat. He's an uncle with a moustache under his nose. That's the guy who was staring at Mr. Sierra earlier. But why does the town smell like basilisk? Probably so fine that Oninam, the beast man, could tell. But the townspeople earlier were not afraid or trying to get close to the barn. And would they smell so delicate that they entered the ranch? That would probably be Mr. Augusto. Mr. Boreas seemed to know the person. What kind of person are you? Would you say Mr. Augusto has been a regular in this town for a long time now? A merchant who has frequently visited the town? This town is a merchant's town, so there are many of them. A merchant who wraps around the smell of basilisk. Suspiciously enough, does Mr. Boreas interact with Mr. Augusto? I do. Before I asked him to come to the King's Landing, he told me he would get rid of the basilisk. He wants to buy this land for everything, and you think it's his place? But I said number. This ranch is a symbol of the weak, so to speak that my ancestors have inherited. I'm not going to give in. Besides, I didn't think he was going to have a basilisk opponent. Definitely, this is totally black. Um, what happened to Mr. Augusto? I think this basilisk is probably Augusto's fault. Oh, what is that? Is it true? The only person who noticed the smell was Nim, the beast man, and I guess Mr. Boreas couldn't have noticed. But if you were a former adventurer, wouldn't you have noticed? Yes, perhaps. As we talked about, this land will be the aim. Mr. Sierra, is basilisk something that manifests itself anywhere? No, you won't come across it unless you even go in the back of the woods. So you mean you brought me all the way out of the woods? You're almost ready. I was saved this time because Nim was there. Even so, I was concerned from the neighborhood where I was staring at Mr. Sierra, and then I might have noticed. Thanks Nim. When I stroked my cat-eared head, Nim looked up at me strangely. Not knowing what it meant, I'd like to let Basilisk escape to the woods without killing him, if possible. Mr. Sierra, don't you know any good ways or something? That's right. When you let them escape, you need to lead them to the woods. So what about stunning them and carrying them? Then let's go with it. Honestly, I don't know if that's the right way or not, and let's just try to be good. Lord Boreas, please stay away for a moment. After a reminder by Mr. Sierra. The barn was opened with the key received from Mr. Boreas, slowly opening the door so as not to make any noise, to ascertain what was going on inside, thanks to the leaking date of the wood inserting from the gap in the wall. He was able to immediately ascertain the appearance of the basilisk. But he noticed the problem there, and once he pulled his face out of the barn, he closed the door. Um, I have three basilisks. Oh no. The requisition says it's one. Mr. Sierra was bewildered by the look of being poked at by surprise. Lord Boreas, what the hell is this all about? I haven't heard there's more than one basilisk. If you lie about what you're asking for, 
you're in trouble, oh no, I did only have one yesterday when I checked, with a day of basilisk, there can be no more of that or two, the rank of the request will not change with two more, but the rewards will change dramatically, besides, basilisk poison is lethal just by touching a drop, so none of the adventurers dare to choose, nobody wants to get their hands on it unless it's left behind and the rewards are even higher, I see, is that why Mr. Sierra hated it, and it's fiercely poisonous, I told you to let it get away cheaply, but it looks pretty risky, seems like Mr. Sierra trusts me, but if I had one, three would still be tough on me for not being treated like a monster, Mr. Sierra, I don't mind, but reschedule, let's decide to kill all three basilisks, and Sharon said he wanted the material, but, I guess Mr. Boreas knew from the beginning, so I'm leaning down, I don't like someone getting hurt over this, and I don't mean it, but let's just get this over with, Augusto told me to show you what I asked for, and I just had to lie, Mr. Boreas speaks suddenly and with regret, if they find out there are three of them, the townspeople won't wait, Mr. Augusto would have enforced it if he knew, then we'll have to sell off this ranch, too, Mr. Sierra is right, there are no adventurers who want to hunt basilisks, not even three of them, I know because I'm an adventurer's end, too, but I couldn't wait, at the end of Mr. Boreas' confession, I took the serpent sword kill Gyrus out of the different space storage, it feels odd to exorcise basilisks with a snake sword, Mr. Sierra, if you cut off your neck, you'll die, won't you, yes, of course I do, I opened the barn door again, Lord Massamoon, we need the material, but if we kill it with erosion, it leaves no trace, then all we have is a sword, Mr. Sierra, I'll do it alone, so stay back, your husband is not the only one in danger, your husband is a healer, basilisk is a frenzy, right, it's okay, it'll be over in a flash, and he opened the door, and there was a serpent trapped around him, apparently, he woke up with Nim's voice, Nim, who saw it, accidentally pressed his mouth, I planted a snake sword and fished for Sean's sword in my head, and derive, dot beast king stream beast king blade free, kicked the ground and instantly packed the distance to the front basilisk, let's start with the whole thing in front of us, quickly pass the blade through the basilisk's neck, I haven't even noticed that basilisk has been slashed yet because my movements carry my inherent skill, divine speed, the basilisk, lv, 8, crusade activated the unique skill guardian of the goddess, choose your loot, next, the two in the back, first the snake on the left, fill the sky with kicking distance and slash your neck with the same procedure as earlier, and right, right after the last one was decapitated, he went down to near the entrance and solved divine speed, at that moment, the three necks in front of you fly at the same time and a large amount of blood erupts from the base, the barn was instantly stained with basilisk blood, and in his head the announcement was flowing, wow, it's amazing, your husband is amazing even though he's a healer, even though I'm a healer is superfluous, Mr. Sierra, let's retrieve the material, it was tear glands, poison bags and big fangs, wasn't it, tell me where, dot it's a boulder, Mr. Sierra was smiling bitterly after his Kyotong expression, basilisk, by the way, had only one skill, but the poison is stained from the fangs, which means he should also have the means to attack with poison, I guess the ability specific to organisms that do not fall under witchcraft or skill cannot be obtained in the guardianship of the goddess either, I don't know for sure, but the only one who applied it was the skill thermal sensing, the level is max in three pieces, well, now let's keep it good, Massa Moon, when I tried to work on the autopsy with Mr. Sierra, I heard Toe's weak voice for some reason, what's up, this basilisk probably wouldn't have done anything if Massa Moon hadn't attacked, dot what do you mean, I know, I know, what, it's probably raised, not wild monsters, so, dot, so I didn't have to kill him, even if they say so, I have no words to give back, I've already killed basilisk, Toe didn't say any more, Lord Massa Moon, leave the material to me, originally, it's a request to me, and let me do this, well, please, more than that, I've been wondering for a while now, is Lord Massa Moon mastered swordsmanship, when I taught you at home, you should have been in a state where you couldn't even carry your feet, but this gap is due to the master, with that said, Mr. Sierra is looking at the slit in the neck of the basilisk, I am talking about Lord Massa Moon, and there must be something wrong with you, but Lord Massa Moon took me, I'm not fooling you, dot, 
There are certainly circumstances. This swordsmanship was acquired after that day. I still couldn't use my sword at that point. Really? I don't know, but I get it. I believe you. Even objectively, what I'm saying is a mess. But Mr. Sierra unexpectedly trusted me very much. After a while the sampling was completed and all the requests were completed. But there was still remorse. I don't know what to say to To. Nam seems to have reviewed me, his eyes sparkling but Toe is a little unwell. You'll be fine with this. This material bag from Lord Boreas should hold tear glands and poison bags even to the king's capital. Mr. Boreas earlier took something from the house that would be a material bag, saying that the contents did not make sense to rot. Mr. Sierra tied the strings of the bag tightly. Please, take this one. Sorry, you cannot pay more than what you have offered for the reward. Actually, it's not that moist. Instead of that said, Mr. Boreas gave me the same looking cloth bag as the material bag. Inside was the meat of Yao Arstein, a luxury food. Apparently, it's what I was raising on this ranch. Thank you. Mr. Sierra was happy to receive and thank him. It's Mr. Sierra who decides, and this will do. Whoa, you guys. How dare you do this to me? That's when I heard noisy voices coming from behind the barn. Looking back. What was there was a fat man with a moustache under his nose. Mr. Augusto. Even if Mr. Boreas calls it that, the man won't look at us, he's been staring at us. It still sounds like this guy is Augusto. He's the one who was in the middle of town. Damn, that belongs to Mr. Gordon. Augusto, looking bumpy and troubled on his own, had his head in front of him with the basilisk carcass scattered in the barn about what it meant. Hey Augusto, which one's Boreas? At that time a huge man appeared also dressed more than necessary in clothing and armor from the shade of the barn, black skinned coat and gloves long enough to cover your ankles, he wears a black and silver plate armor that looks sturdy enough to hide his shoulders from it, the neck was wrapped with a cloth thick enough for the skin to hide, and questions arose as to how satisfied it would be to wear it, but the biggest feature is its long, giant sword, it's like extending a Chinese knife, Two meters suits the shape of this man who would have surpassed you. I'll slap your neck with this decapitation knife. Just tell me, dude. What the hell is this? Why are my adorable pets dying? Augusto, what the hell is this? Wow, it's not me. It's them. It's the work of those adventurers that Boreas called an adventurer. Are The big man looked back at me. He opens his mouth and stares at me with a face like his anger has reached its peak but immediately the gaze was directed at Mr. Sierra. At the end of the day, Toe, I don't seem hostile to him and I'm not looking forward to it. I think you're feeling magic in your thoughts. It's you, huh? The aim was set in Toe. No way, Toe has more magic than Mr. Sierra, but not if you're thinking about it. You're not ignoring me. You must be the one who killed my pet. So I went forward without leaving it empty. What, you, Dot? This conversation won't make sense. Anyway. This guy starts waving the sword in his hand. Hey hey, Boreas, I'm sorry, but you have to die here. Hiding in the shadow of the man, the merchant Augusto had an invincible grin with Nyanya. I would have kept you alive if you hadn't hired adventurers and such. I was going to pay for the land. I had no intention of humiliating this honorable town. I was just thinking of building a mansion. Live and die self-depraved here overlooking the town of Week. What do you say, your best remaining life as a merchant? but I can't help it. How pathetic. No words. I do not know the relationship between Mr. Boreas and this merchant. But not so shallow a relationship, Mr. Boreas seemed somewhere sad. Augusto, there are two guys who look strong. The reward is not to delude. Perhaps that means Mr. Sierra and Toe. This guy's seen me somewhere else in front of him since earlier, only about the two of us. Rest assured, I'm not gonna lie in exchange for money. It's my nature, and if you kill these guys, Let's double my word. If we get this land anyway, we won't have any trouble with the money. I don't think you're lying. Of course it is. But I'm not paying you for not killing me. Who are you telling? I'm Gordon. The man named Gordon lowered the huge knife he had on his shoulder to the ground in a transverse manner. So, who do you want to be killed from? Anyone can do it. I'll let you choose. I'm telling you anyone. This guy only sees Mr. Sierra and Toe. What that means is that you are surely weaker than me. I don't know how much magic this guy has, 
but it's a downgrade decision at a time when he can't sense my magic. I'll do it, huh? I doubted my ears unexpectedly. Toe came forward with a strong face. I guess this guy who called Basilisk a pet or something doesn't care. Toe wasn't timid at all. Are you all right with just you? You can take that woman with you. Okay. Sweeten your words. Mr. Sierra? Even Mr. Sierra passed by me and stepped forward. Besides, I've even pulled out my sword already. Ha ha ha. It's going to be fun tonight. After you two cut off your legs, I'm gonna turn the three behind you into this chopped rust. Once you receive your reward, head straight to the inn. Sure. Hold you two. He's the man he looks like. Ugly nigger surfaces get in the way. You two seem motivated. But you can't keep such an unclean man close to you two. Don't let Masamoon get his hands on you. I'll do it. Where did the cowardly toe go when we met? Is the demon nation adaptable? Lord Masamoon, stand down. Yes, when Mr. Sierra told you. Gordon, who didn't even try to put me in his sight until then, had only a sharp gaze at me without even a cunning look. I don't like it. Too? I said I didn't like it. I can't believe I'm looking at a guy who wants you to serve a woman and take that for granted. Dot. Are you dying first? But when Gordon laughed niggardly, they both stepped forward at the same time. Toe set up a broadsword, and Mr. Sierra set up a rapier and stumbled upon the defenseless Gordon, who had not yet set up an oversized sword, but on the ranch. The sound of a sword crossing with a sword. These are fast-minded ladies. Are you playing with me that much? Gordon was using the sides of the beheading knife to stop the two swords at the same time. Sounds like you're going to do a little bit. Toe was in eye contact with Mr. Sierra with a laugh. Lightning. I heard Toe chanting. Shortly after, a yellow magic formation appeared at Gordon's feet and the electric shock fell with a tremendous roar from above. G -w 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 -w. Gordon had an electric shock all over him. That sounds like the guild's pathetic adventurer who someday pissed Toe off. Gordon's body was partially black and burnt with hot air. Lord Toe, severely ill Gordon began to shake his beheading knife messily as he raised his ambition to represent his anger. But Mr. Sierra, who cut off the first move, tells Toe and the two take a distance from Gordon. Damn it. Ugh. Gordon lifts his huge sword lightly with one hand like mad and raises his fierce roar, but his breath seems to be rough and breathing on his shoulders. Apparently, Toe's magic worked. Ha. Ha. A lot of magic. That's not how they compare. Is the demonic power still different from that of man? It should be just an electric shock, but Gordon seemed to be dying. Nim is joining the fight. We need to help you both. Nim stood his hands and clawed as he uttered an unintelligible phonetic shershersh behind me. Let's leave this place to the two of us. Dot yes, sir. A soggy Nim. But you can't hit that giant with a young girl. Rage warrior. The screams of anger echoed again, and the purple demon squares appeared at Gordon's feet. This is dark attribute magic. While Mr. Sierra gave a look of agitation, Toe smiles sparingly. But the dark attribute is a rather troublesome magic. If you're a white king knight. You know how dangerous this magic is, right? You seem to be mistaken for someone. Emotions are on your face, huh? Besides, it's nothing to hide. Speaking of Boreas Week at Week Ranch, I also know the story of King Arnold's old friend, who controls Razorson. You guys are from Razorson, aren't you? There's no way a king in peace is just going to send an adventurer. My best friend's in trouble. Hey, Gordon's body wraps around a purple aura and his flesh becomes enlarged as the magic formation of light moves from foot to hip to torso. There were blood vessels floating around my forehead, and I could imagine what kind of ability it was. That sounds dangerous, that. Men aren't breaking into stories. I'm talking to this white king knight right now. Lord Toe, let me go first. Gordon missed his gaze on me and Mr. Sierra stepped forward with a spike. Speed has only ever been chosen as a white king knight at a young age. Sierra. Soto screamed to tell him of the danger. The next moment, Rapier and Gordon make contact. Become? That's the result Toe would have feared in the moment now. Rapier's blade broke when it curved without piercing, and broke as it was. Mr. Sierra should have followed Gordon's gap. Is there ever a time when human skin is stiffer? But I guess that's the magic effect. Apparently you don't know anything about this magic. Ugly voice and grin. Gordon's enlarged right arm was about to hit Mr. Sierra. I'm invincible in this state. Physical attacks don't work. But don't even think magic works just now. Master Gordon is invincible. That's when. Lightning speed. 
Toe disappeared. Lightning storm sword lightning phase. I heard further chants from the remnants approaching Gordon. Wrapping a turbulent electric shock around his sword, Toe appeared in the moment now between Mr. Sierra and Gordon. Become Gordon on the dumb surface. Broadswords swept through with cool expressions against Gaiha. Shortly after, a lot of blood broke out of Gordon's neck. Lord Toe, thank you for your help. I'm sorry. It's always a thank you for staying. Mr. Sierra smiles thinly at the words. In the background I can see Gordon falling into the big letters. By the time the electric shock granted to Broadsword could be solved, Gordon was lying on the ground. I see, I mean, was it possible to crusade Kalane without me? Kalane and I aren't human at all. This guy doesn't disable magic. Does he? That's why I was able to take him down. But earlier moves didn't belong to the average adventurer. Advanced magic unleashed on Kalain and the brilliant move earlier, Lord Toe. He's just a new American adventurer. I would definitely recommend it to the White King Knight. The White King Knight is fine, but first tell Toe he's safe in his hometown. Suddenly, Gordon reappears in the background of the two of us. Get a cunning grin on your bloody mouth and the raised eyes of your blood vessels look like monsters, not humans. Rise and fall. This is who this magic is. I turn around with a bloody look on that voice, and we both notice. But that doesn't make it. Curse the great spear. Gordon had a black spear in his right hand and was trying to swing it down without leaving it empty. I'm about to disable the soul break, but although there was agitation in Gordon's expression, his eyes still captured the two of them. Erosion wave disparies aura. Red and black fluctuations leak out of my body, and then the shape stays in the sphere. He stepped on the soil and activated divine speed, and rushed right between them to Gordon. I can't even hear Gordon without feeling the contact. I just passed. Stopping the movement and looking back, there was nothing there, just an announcement of the Gordon crusade flowing through my head. August 2, who saw it? is cramping his face by the barn. You want to be like this, too? I pointed a snake sword at Augusto. Take it, it's outrageous. Sorry, I will never do this again. So just life, just spare me life. Mr. Boreas, what will you do with this man? When I ask, Mr. Boreas gives me a hazy look like I was surprised. The expression restored calm, but Mr. Boreas looked troubled. Mr. Augusto. Promise me you won't get your hands on this land anymore. This is my home, which I inherited from my ancestors. I can't sell it to you drowned in personal gain. Yes. Sorry. I promise. Augusto was soggy. 